What's up, everybody? It's me. It's me. I'm kicking the show off. Put the camera on me. It's always about Brandon. Today, it's about me. What's up, everybody? Ashley Nicole Moss here. Brandon <laughs> Marshall, Corey Holmes. As you can see, we're, start? We're, we're, we're trying to, we're rocking and rolling. That's what no, happens when you have punches. me start the show. You see that? No, it wasn't you. Okay, it, it wasn't, wasn't me. You. I, I was gonna, I was gonna it wasn't you, Ashley. I was going to take the blame that, for the though. squad, though. I, I love that. I was going to take the blame for the squad. Much respect. Listen, it is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Unless you are a Golden State Warrior fan or a New York Knicks fan, then it's not a happy Tuesday. Um, this is Paper Route, and if you're listening on Sirius XM, Faction Talk 103, hello, happy Tuesday to you as well. Um, we have a lot to get into. I'm going to I'm gonna try to power through the show today. I know these two can't wait to give me a hard time, <laughs> specifically Corey, but I'm okay. I'm from New York City. I was built for this. Ask, I, I've, been, question. I've been through tougher times. Let me ask you a real question. For sure. Does it really matter? Does what really matter? Because you're saying you're going to power through the show. Mm-hmm. Tough times. You're referring to the Knicks losing, going down three the to Knicker one, bonkers. right? Mm-hmm. The Knickerbockers. The Knickerbockers. We can call them <laughs> oh, they're right? the Knicks. The Knickerbockers. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so, I mean, you guys have been through this year after year after year. I mean, this is actually a win for you guys to be in the postseason. So, does it really matter? A hundred percent, it matters. What a kind of ridiculous question is that? Because I just feel like there's some fan bases that their expectations are so low, the standard is so low, and I just feel like the Knicks. She's hot, Lord. She's hot. No, I'm listening. I'm, 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 I'm listening. I'm trying to no, I'm just saying, like, th- for example, <clears throat> if you're a Lakers, uh, if you're a Lakers fan, mm-hmm. if you are uh, uh, a Celtics fan, if you are even a Heat fan, right? You know, they had some phenomenal years. There's certain team Warriors. There's mm-hmm. teams out there where their fan base is like, no, the expectation is for us to win. You can do the same thing in football. You have the Patriots, right? You have uh, who else is out there that's really good? I mean, you could throw Philly, Nike, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, the Chiefs yeah, are out the Chiefs, there. Definitely. So those fan bases like, yo, we're supposed to be in the playoffs. We're supposed to win championships. And then there's teams out there like the Knicks. And then mm-hmm. there's teams out there like the Browns. Mm-hmm. That's like, yo, if we make it to the playoffs, great job that's what I'm asking you know that's the only thing you guys don't expect to be um, here so why are you guys taking it so I hard I think the expectations for this team is are lower from outsiders than it is from New York Knicks fans Knicks fans are and we'll dive into it a little bit more but I mean we're a basketball city we don't have I football know. in New York like that we mm-hmm. don't have baseball we don't have a lot of those other sports basketball is everything so the Knicks being you know, subpar, below subpar, um, whether they're really good, that doesn't change what we expect from them, what we want from them. We want a winning team. Now, are we always the most rational? No. Sometimes we think that a team may be more equipped to go further than what they are. But if you're asking if does it matter, 100%. The reason why is because in your lifetime, you've never, have you seen them win a championship? No, but I've seen them in playoff series. I mean, I was the Carmelo Anthony era. I mean, I've seen them be better teams than than I've also I've seen them be both really good teams and really bad teams but what I'm saying is is that we we have high expectations for them Mm -hmm. now are we also rational in the sense that maybe we're a piece away and we've gotten a lot further than we did last season the season before and we see the progress absolutely but if we're okay with losing no absolutely not okay well I'm gonna let you start the show Uh, sorry to put so much pressure on you from the beginning but um I'm, I'm not. Just, I'm not saying. I'm not. You're, you're just in a tough spot. You, I'm not in a tough two spot. Two phenomenal organizations: the Dallas Cowboys and the Knicks. Love it, right? Great brands. But as far as like delivering and making you guys happy, they just haven't been able to do that. <laughs> Sheesh. Why my Cowboys catch a stray? It's not even football season yet. I know. I can't <laughs> wait for football season. And let's not talk about some of the franchises you've played for. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, Corey, start the show. Oh, like, you want to go. go there? We go. go. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> Chicago. Oh, you want to talk about the Jets? You want to talk about the Giants? Right, let me you want to talk about the Saints? Which team you want to talk about? <laughs> the Broncos won it. They oh, we want to talk about the Broncos. What do you want to talk about? Which one? Once. Pick, pick a struggle. Right. Don't They're start with me. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna come in and save you, B. All right. So what we're, what we're gonna do today is we're, we're gonna preview the games tonight. Of course, the, night, the games between 76ers and the Celtics and Suns and the Nuggets. And then of course we're gonna talk about the Knickerbockers. 
Knickerbockers. They're facing elimination against the Heat. We'll see what happens in game five. Again, I'm calling Heat in five. But uh, anyways, there's another team that's facing elimination, and that is the Warriors. Last night, they lost to the Lakers 104 to 101. The Lakers now improved to 301 as well over the Warriors. LeBron James, he was the leading scorer with 27 points. But Lonnie Walker, right, he stepped up huge for the Lakers down the stretch. But somebody I want to talk about is Anthony Davis, right? Mm. We were talking about it yesterday. Like, will he go back-to-back games with 20-plus points? He did just that. He had 23 points and 15 rebounds. I want to ask y'all, like, what has impressed you the most about the Lakers in this series? Me, I'd say it's been their defense. Like, I really think yeah, they have been locking, you know, the, the Warriors up. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts, Ashley? Well, well yeah, Ashley's oh, you go always first? Go uh, jumping us off in basketball for now. Mm-hmm. And when I become the expert, then I'll be able to jump us off. But, I, you know, before I get into what's impressed me about the game, you know what's impressing me right now is you, Corey. Yeah. Like, Everyone that's watching right now, can you show Corey some love? Corey, I mean, went to school for this, right? But more on the writing side. Mm-hmm, now mm-hmm. you throw him in front of the camera, and he's doing a great job. This is hard to do. We saw BC <laughs> last <laughs> last week, our, our producer, flop when we put the camera on him. And now you have Damn. Corey. Corey, yeah. you're doing a great job. I appreciate that. Right? Appreciate do you want that, to give yeah. him some love? You want I some agree. Flowers? Definitely yeah. improving from day one to yeah. now. It's struck. Huge improvement. Congratulations, go. Corey. Definitely was a struggle. They um, am, I, am I improving? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. What's up with your shirt? Uh-oh. What do you mean? What? what what's, what's up? What are we doing? How, how just, you want to do just, it today? I just have early. a question. Coming okay, let me ask you. What's up with the is sweatshirt? It my fault? I'm the one. I'm the one that brought this type of energy into the no, studio. No, I'm just confused <laughs> on the sweatshirt today. No. Like, Brooklyn? are you from there? I'm a big fan of Brooklyn. You notice I told you this. So like you're a I Nets fan this. again. I've, I'm a Nets fan, but I may. Please stop. We're supposed to get into the show. I'm just curious. But I may, I may, I may disown them. Oh, okay. I may disown them. I may disown them. Why is that? I thought I you were a fan. Them. I may just follow my swept, guys. So I may just spy, follow uh, Donovan Mitchell. Um, I may just, who else do I like now? Who did I say I like now? I said this could be my new favorite. I don't know. I, I forgot to take notes. Is it Jalen Brunson? I'm a Knicks fan. Now, now you're a Knicks fan. I'm a Knicks fan. But I'm I thought I remember Brooklyn. you saying the Cavs. I ain't going to lie. No, no, the You Cavs, remember the Cavs, not, right? No, 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 okay, no, no, just making sure. Cavs. Just making sure. Just it's making not the sure. Cavs. It's, it's not the Cavs. You what just, I said was, was it Donovan Mitchell? See, see, that, see you try to twist going, my but. words. I, Corey heard the same, so I'm twisting his words. I said, <laughs> I said I follow players. Back in the day, who did I say I liked? Who are two players that said was my favorite players? Michael Jordan. No, not Michael Jordan. Oh, what were we talking about? Of course, Michael Jordan's the GOAT, but Carmelo Anthony and who? The the Wayne Wade. Okay. okay. So you were a heated Knicks players. fan. No, so I followed my players. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now I got Donovan Mitchell. There's no more Carmelo Anthony. There's no more D mm-hmm. Wade. Mm-hmm. So who am I following now? Donovan Mitchell. So mm-hmm. Donovan mm-hmm. Mitchell, he's with the Cavs. So mm-hmm. naturally, I'm a, I'm gonna want him to do good. I want him to succeed, right? right, right so right. I'm not a Cavs fan. I'm a so Nets you're Drake. Fan. I'm a Nets fan right you're now. Drake. <laughs> I'm a Nets fan you're right now. Drake. You're Drake. You no. hop around Team from up. one, one day wagoner. you're a Kentucky you fan. Can't do that. He's a you can't wagoner. do that. That's not what a fan name is. Name your name your favorite uh your your favorite basketball players. My favorite basketball right now, players. Active right now. Uh, that you support. Steph Curry. Okay. Jimmy Butler. Okay. Mm, probably Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. Okay. So LeBron. Okay, LeBron. Okay, but I'm not a Lakers, Suns, Miami Heat. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> uh, so fan, I'm Devin a Knicks Booker, fan. if any of those players are playing against a team. If any of those players are playing against a team that you don't, that doesn't have a player that you like, do you not want them to win? So Devin Booker playing against the the Memphis Grizzlies because you didn't say Jaw. Did you say Jaw Morant? No, I didn't say Jaw. Okay. I don't have an issue with Jaw. Okay, so one if of one of your favorite players is playing against Jaw Morant, who do you want to win? I don't really have a stake in like who wins, who loses. I Just want Devin Booker. Question. I'm excited to watch Devin Booker play. But if the Suns lose, I'm not gonna cry. Okay, like, I don't I'm care. Not crying if the like Cavs I don't care. Lose. I'm not <laughs> crying if the Cavs lose. I mean, you were crying when the Nets were losing. You were bragging when they were winning. But last time I checked, it sounds uh-huh. like you're not even a Nets fan. Okay. Oh man. Just right. saying. Go ahead, Corey. <laughs> so yeah, now if y'all remember, the question was, what has impressed you the most about the Lakers in this series? Definitely the defense. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with you there. Also, I mean, Anthony Davis has so far been a lot more consistent than yeah. he has been yes. throughout the course of the NBA season, which when we started the conversation about this series particularly, I said he was going to be the X factor. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you know, when it comes to the bench, you're going to have players who pop off between night and every other night, right? You can't really go ahead and make that 
um, assumption on who's going to do it because the bench is, is more of a, uh, a circumstantial situation, right? But when you talk about your stars and your starters, you expect consistency from them night in and night out. That's been the strike against Anthony Davis. But I said that he was going to be the X factor. His consistency was going to make or break this series. Mm -hmm. And he's been a lot more consistent than we have seen from him. And it's making a difference because when AD is on, mm -hmm. AD is on. Yeah. And, and when and so he is Lakers. off, the Lakers feel it. And yeah. right now, I mean, again, getting contributions from their bench. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, had a mm -hmm. Lonnie Walker game last night. Yeah, sure but Anthony Davis and his contribution and his consistency can't be ignored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, a few things stood out for me watching that game. Had a great time sitting at the beach club, at the bar, watching mm -hmm. these games. It was awesome. Ashley, you screened my call. I called you because I wanted to talk a little ball. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching the Knicks game. It doesn't matter. That's rude because then you go out there and you're tweeting. You go but out I there was and watching tweet. the Knicks game. But you could have called me back. I was watching... <laughs> The Knicks what game. about when the Knicks game was over? I was in my feelings. <laughs> okay. All right. Give me a pass. I was in a depression. All right. If so that makes you feel after, better. after the Knicks got their ass kicked, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. the next game came on what? The Lakers and the Warriors. Yep. And the three things that stood out to me was uh, the Lakers poise. That's one, right? Both offensively and defensively, let's right. be honest. Like, and, and Ashley, last night, the Lakers, the Lakers proved to me that they're the better team. And I think that's a big deal because the – the Warriors been together, at least their core guys for the most part, they've been together longer, even their coach, okay? The Lakers put this team together during the season for the most part. They still had AD, obviously, LeBron James, Austin Reeves, mm -hmm. uh, end up turning it on right around, what, the halfway mark. But all these other guys, they're just guys. And they came and played. One of the points is depth. The Lakers had more depth. How the hell does the Lakers have more? Yeah. <laughs> the Lakers had oh, more man. depth, and it was cool to see the other guys contribute, right? Did you talk about Walker? You brought up. I mean, the Lonnie Walker game, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's like how, he, he was ready. He was prepared for Absolutely. that moment. But I think that the the interesting thing about this Lakers team specifically for me is that you can never pinpoint who's going to be the biggest contributor off the bench. Right, right. And I think that that's what makes you the most dangerous. I think the Warriors are a little bit at a disadvantage right now, at least. And again, when we're talking about being down three and one, only 13 teams, I believe, have ever come back from that deficit in NBA history. Yeah. Do I wasn't think... Wasn't the Cavs, uh, wasn't the Warriors one? Well, yeah, they yes. were. They were. The yeah. Now, I do I think the up, Warriors actually. can do it again? Yes. Yeah. I don't ever count out a championship team, a dynasty that is the Golden that is the Golden count State Warriors. Out, I don't ever count them out. And again, we've seen the Lakers last series against the Memphis Grizzlies. They were mm. up three one, and that yeah. series went seven. Went seven. Yeah, yeah, but listen. And count, the and the, and the and they're, team not nearly, they're not nearly they're not nearly as good as the Golden yeah, State yeah, Warriors. Yeah, yeah. My first point was the poise, and you agree with me. You said on both ends, offense and defense. Count them out because Steph had what twenty? No, what did he have? Thirty points. He last had a night? triple double last he night. He had thirty points. But that, that was that was a hard, hard triple double. Yeah, like that was it was, it was it was battle tested. It yeah. was battle tested. Yeah. They didn't. Need, he had thirty points and he never got in rhythm. I would go out there on the edge and say that that he never really got in rhythm. Like they they Fair they they he had to fight he, for everything he got last he, night. And I'm 30. saying that because the Lakers are playing exceptional on the defensive side. I'm watching this game last night, Ash. I'm like, mm -hmm. holy shit. If they get through, well, they, obviously, I think they're going to get through uh, this series. But I like them versus the Nuggets or the Suns. LeBron James yeah. can find himself in another NBA Finals. And then on the other side, who do you have? Who I don't know if you? I like him against, the, I don't know if I like the Lakers think against of, the Nuggets. The Suns, yes. Think the about, Nuggets are, think they about, play a little bit a of a different. Matchup. But think about defensively, though. They're strapping down right now. Yeah. They're playing at an exceptional level on the defensive side. That's mm -hmm. what's, that's, yeah. that's what's really uh, uh, getting them here, and that's what yeah. you're talking about. The issue yeah, no, for me just, with the Warriors the and... From the phonies in the playoffs. If we were... Again, I'm not counting out the Warriors to come back from 3-1. and If any team in the NBA can do it, it's the Golden State Warriors when you have Steph Curry, when you have that championship DNA, when you're fresh off of a championship. I'm not going to count them out. My issue and my biggest question mark is Jordan Poole. Mm -hmm. And if we were getting a different version of Jordan Poole, I would say this team is coming back from 3-1. and It's not over. You saw the Grizzlies do it. Watch them do it. But Jordan Poole had zero points last night. Zero. Zero. Do you know how asinine it is in a <laughs> playoff game? Yeah. To have zero points in a game, I'm not going to call it a must win, 
but in a game that it's you probably would that. have liked to or should have won, yeah. to have zero contribution yeah. from someone you just gave $120 million Ooh. to, well, can we, can we it's talk about, not okay. Can we talk about the amount of minutes he's playing too? Like yeah. his, it, I would say his, his, time, like his tick had reduced dramatically since that last shot, remember that shot that we were breaking down another, you know, right. last week. I feel like, yeah, they've uh, they've they've almost. The shot is what did it. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, he he, he had I ten know. minutes last night. That's he, right. he played ten minutes last night, right? That's so, right. and then you got a guy like um, Gary Payton, who's now been inserted into the starting lineup. I really think that you know he's kind of replacing him now in in the role well, that he had. You well, know, at the beginning said of the that series. yesterday on the show. So obviously, we can't say Stephen Jackson got to say <laughs> stack <laughs> or five. Uh, he said it yesterday was. Uh, he's did he say he's not being a pro? No, his effort is his, piss poor. No, is what no, he you said. brought up the effort. No, he, he said agreed it. That you. was his quote. His effort is piss poor. That was a direct quote. Yes, yes, I yeah, but when I'm but he also talked about like a young player not dealing with adversity the right way in so many words, right? Like Jordan Poole coming off the bench, uh, he's not dealing with that, and some players can't. So Stack talked about that, and, and, and maybe that's what it is, right? Like some guys. Uh, can't play through adversity. Mm -hmm. There may be some other things going on in, internally uh, in, inside that locker room that we just may not know. I'm just not – this is not a player who hasn't seen adversity. an intense playoffs or even a championship before. He was part of that team yeah. last season right. when That's they right. went all That's the right. way. That's right. Mm -hmm. So this is a player who in some aspect has been battle-tested in a way of the bright lights, high intensity – having a lot to a lot on their shoulders that they have to contribute. Right. I don't want to equate this to the Draymond situation because I don't want to say that somebody's incapable of doing their job as a professional in the NBA that only 1% of athletes are in the league once they go through college and playing through high school, only 1% of them make it to the league. Right. I don't want to say he's that mentally incapable of putting that aside months after it happened. We're not talking about this happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. We're not even talking about this happened last week. This happened at the beginning of the season. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, before the season even started. So if, if, and that's a big if, if that is still affecting him, that is a problem. Yeah. I'm not going to go ahead and say that. He did, he gave a, um, there was a, reporter for NBC out in Golden out in um the Warrior for the Warriors that um was kind of giving information on what the environment was in the locker room last night after the the loss with the Warriors and music was playing and Jordan Poole was facing his locker and you know the visitor locker room is super cramped and reporters came in and his back's towards them and he shuts the music off and she says you can hear a pin drop that all of his teammates are like Mm. listening in on what he's going to say. And he wow. basically says in so many words, if I knew what the problem was, I would fix it. Mm. If it's my, my shots aren't falling, if I knew how to fix it, I would fix it. I right. don't know right. what the issue is. Right. That's concerning. Yeah. Right. When you don't know what the issue is, you don't know how to it's, attack it, and there's not enough time to figure it out, Jordan. No. I need you to channel something because you are, that 20 plus points that you're supposed to give off the bench is essential for this team to win or stand a chance. Listen, I, I, I love I love your perspective, but Ashley, sometimes it could just be, I'm in a slump, yeah. right? Like, but what's and, and, causing it? What's causing? It's just you're in. A, it could be so many things. It's just like, it could be. You know, sometimes players are, and I'm not giving him an excuse. I'm not giving him out, right? Because you get okay. paid the big bucks. You just got a huge contract, and you're supposed to deliver, mm -hmm. especially in these moments. Right. But we've seen guys in the past fold. Right. Not only in the NBA, but in all sports. And and he could just easily just be in a slump. Mm -hmm. that, something happened in the game. Mm -hmm. A coach, a coach looked at you differently. A, a player looked at you differently. And then it didn't fall. And then you got three games four. you went three, four games in a row and, and it just didn't happen. Now the coach starts taking minutes away. Mm -hmm. Right. And playing the other guys. And now you fall farther in that hole. I never forget. That's what ended my career in ball. Like I was. I was damn near done, right? I could have I could have snuck out a couple more years. I'm just going to give this example and this my experience uh, just to highlight how, you know, great players can fall in a slump, right? And, and at this point in my career, I wasn't a great player, but I knew how to catch the damn ball. I was a c consistent there. I said, you throw me five balls right now, catch them however, however way you want me to catch them. Mm -hmm. So Pete Carroll. 
There's a lot of pressure on Pete Carroll. Why was there a lot of pressure on Pete Carroll in 2018? Because he said, all right, now the Legion of Boom, that's no more. Now we're investing in Russell Wilson in this offense, right? Now can we do it again? If he didn't get it done, there was <laughs> talk that he and Snyder was going to be fired. They were going to bring in a new team, okay? So we start off the season 0-2. So 0 and 2, we're playing against your boys, the Dallas Cowboys. I dropped two balls. How about them? I mm -hmm. dropped two balls. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of them, my glove. My gloves in my hand. I couldn't understand like, how the hell I dropped that easy five yard, damn shallow route. Seen on film, boom, glove in my hand. But I come to the sideline. Pete Carroll, anti, looking. Eh. Then you saw a receiver over there looking at me like, damn, bro. And then Doug Baldwin snap, snapping. Dog, slap shit. Let me stop. Let me keep going. Whoa, Let me whoa, stop. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah, that's why. Right yeah. right yeah. right but, but anyway, so, so now the players and the coaches are getting antsy because it's a big moment. They never fail, you know, 02, 03. He benches me. Okay? Wow. He benches me, right? Do you know for the next six weeks, I had the fucking drops in practice. Mm. All in my head. Damn. I started dropping the ball like e the easiest. Ashley yeah. right here tossed me a football, dropped it. Yeah. It's like, what the hell is going on? It took me almost six weeks to get out of that slump. So sometimes it's great players, you know, they they, they they just have those moments. And I think that's where he's at right now. And, and you know, you, what you said, yes, he's battle tested. You, you, you have a championship pedigree. You've been through it right now. And, and, and so, like, when you talk about searching for something, it's just, it is what it is. Mike, mm -hmm. but it's, I go back to game one, the game that they lost. And we, we talk about that shot. And taking that shot out of the equation, he had a decent showing. Mm -hmm. And it was a sign of optimism coming off of a Sacramento series that he wasn't very impactful in. And that game, minus that shot and how you feel about it, gave you hope that, okay, he that's in the past we're gonna get a, the jordan pool that we right. need to go ahead and make this a series and possibly win it and then it just disappeared so i don't know what happened between that and if it's the if it is the fact that out of everything he did right in that game that one shot and how people were debating it if that was enough to throw him off his game that is a problem mm -hmm. because there are going to be decisions you make in a game that may or may not work and you have to live with them and you have to move on whether they result in a win whether they result in a loss you got to put it to bed and focus on the next next task the next game if he was un if that was enough to shake his confidence to the point that he is giving you zero minute i mean zero points T off 10 mm -hmm. minutes though he ain't playing but he Kerr can't play him he's a liability i know he's a liability I, not only defensively right, but now offensively right, right. because you're not producing actually yeah. everything you're saying everything you're saying is right and this is how we should be having a conversation i'm just adding a little bit more color to the conversation um you know because players players mess up too yeah you know players have bad games players have gr bad series players have well, we always say great players, you can't have a bad year. You have a bad game. I mean, great players have bad years. Have bad plays, bad. Ah, yeah, Ashley, yeah. Ashley, yeah, bad, Ashley, bad Ashley. No, 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 no. Ashley, <laughs> Ashley. Kobe Bryant never had a bad year. Michael Jordan never had a bad year. LeBron James ever had a bad year. Allen Iverson ever had a bad year. And I'm not talking about when they got out of, mm -hmm. you know, their the prime of their career or toward the tails tail ear years of their career. Tom Brady, has Tom Brady ever had a bad year? I mean No when name it. Don't you, you gonna say last year? Yeah, I know, right? The you gonna say last year? This is last year. He's fifty. He's fifty. <laughs> okay, but you you just said bad so, year. Ashley Nicole Moss, Ashley Nicole Moss, Brandon Marshall, Corey Holmes here on Paper Route. We love you guys so much for rocking with us um, on our show. You know, we're so excited to build this with you, you guys. What, and then also anybody who's tuning in to Sirius XM Channel One Hundred Three uh, Faction Talk. Love you guys. Ashley, hold, I'm gonna, on, you... I'm, hold on. I'm going to push back on that a little bit Go. because for me, it's not about having a bad year, bad season, bad, bad half a season, bad week. For me, the greatest players are the ones who can bounce back from that because yes. you're going to you're going to have trials and tribulations throughout a career. That's you cannot right. expect your career to be this the entire time. It's going to go like this sometimes. If you're a really great player, maybe it goes like this sometimes. But how do you bounce back from that? How do you not allow that to affect your psyche to the point that you cannot be played because you can't be trusted? Hey, that's just that part is of a sports, problem. Yeah, no, but that's is. part of sports. It Let me is. ask you this. Uh, will Dak Prescott 
bounce back next year? There was he had a, there was a stretch where he threw what ten interceptions in like six One games. One thing it felt like. you can't say about Dak, you can you can say a lot of things about him. You can diss the Cowboys. You can make Cowboy jokes. He is probably one of the most mentally tough players in the NFL. Okay, he has been through but, a but lot, my, but, and he and his ability to compartmentalize and move forward is one of his best. We assets. don't see that. No, first off, timeout, timeout. Let, well, my the reason why I brought up Dak Prescott is mm -hmm. because. You would say everybody was, even our guy Shady McCoy went out there and said what he said that I didn't agree with, mm -hmm. right? I don't think players should talk about players like that. Mm -hmm. Now, can we hold each other accountable? Absolutely. Can we highlight what we see on film? Absolutely. But Dak Prescott, there was a stretch where he was he wasn't playing efficient football at the quarterback position, yes. right? So that, that's re I brought it up because to me, Dak Prescott is a great quarterback. Right now. Will he bounce back this year? Will he play better? Because what do we know Dak Prescott to be? Efficient in protecting the ball. He That's how he made his name. He came in, took over for Tony Romo, and he threw like 22 touchdowns and like four picks. It's like, yo, this is a rookie doing this. Or was it his rookie year he did that or yes. second year? It was his rookie year. So mm -hmm. I just say sometimes players go through things, and you ask the question, you know, like you, what you said is, well, Dak is mentally tough. Well, what we don't see a lot of times is our athletes – and this is Mental Health Awareness Month. This is May. Check on your strong people. I right? always do. Like, now I'm talking about this. I'm just talking oh. to our audience. Like, everybody, check on check on the people that, that, that look like they have it all together. Right? And, and I say that for athletes. Athletes, you know, we compartmentalize. You know, uh, a lot of times the world don't see us, how we're getting over these humps. But there's plenty of times, I, I, I guarantee Dak Prescott has been, I felt isolated, felt depressed at times, felt you know, super stressed because of what he's dealing with. So we don't see those low moments because as soon as he walks out of his house, and this is for a lot of athletes and a lot of people that's in, in the media, you got to always put on. You always got to be on. Mm -hmm. And that is the tough part. So I, I say that because you, you, you mentioned, you know, mentally tough, and he's always going to overcome, but do we see how they overcome? No, and I agree. I'm, and my friends who are athletes, you know, I've noticed that they also aren't very good at um, – having those conversations their mm. their first result is to retreat mm -hmm. like i know for example I'll, so I'll use melvin as an example when melvin was going through his issues with the chargers you know melvin and i have been friends since melvin, i gordon. melvin yeah gordon have we've been friends since i was a sophomore in college so we're going on like eight years now um he is somebody who retreats like he'll disappear he doesn't want to have the conversation doesn't want to talk like and you have to like be on them. You know what That's I mean? There, there aren't af athletes for the most part are not the most communicative when it comes to their emotions because yeah. they're taught to be tough. They're taught to power through. They're yeah. taught to taught to focus on the next thing. Like, don't we don't have time for you to cry? What's next? That's like, right. that's because yes, and it's, you're, it's you're trained to be like you're that. trained to be like but that. Men as well. It's not just athletes, but it's men. I think it's uh, it's it's times too when it comes to athletes, right? Because you have to mass pain and you're living in that yeah. sports world. But men, period, struggle opening up and having that conversation. Yeah, and it's it's hard, and you have and a lot of, sometimes it's frustrating when you're in somebody's life and they're not communicative and. You know, I think for me, I'm a little bit more patient with that, with people in general, not just athletes, with people who have that trait, because I'm like that. Yeah. And I'm somebody who tends to um, keep things to themselves because I don't, if I, if I ignore it, I don't have to discuss it. Right, right. And I'm like that, so I'm, I have a sensitivity for, to people who are also like that. I don't take it as personal, but it's, yeah, it's, so, un, it's, it's hard. It's yeah. a hard thing to be. So a few things right now. Check on your, on your people. All right, men, it's okay to talk. All right, my homeboy Mike Sims Walker, we college roommates, brothers. Um, he called me this morning. Aww. Yo, you quiet. I know what that means when you quiet. Everything cool. So driving up to the studio, I was talking to Mike for thirty minutes, and we Aww. talked about our families. We talked about business. Uh, he understands things that's going on in my life, and I understand what he's going through and similar things. And so that was a beautiful thing. He checked on me. Um, Ashley, let's do this real quick. I love that. Uh, you know, on, on the platform, we love doing check-ins. We'll do it real quick. Where are you at 1 to 10? I'm checking on you. Where are you at 1 to 10? I'm actually really, really good. 1 to 10. 10 being the best? Yep. I don't think anything in life is perfect. I'm, I'm a good 8 right now. Good 8. I'm a good 8. That's great. Yeah, what about you? What are you, 1 through 10? <sighs> I got to be honest. Mm-hmm. 
this might be the lowest I've ever been like flying. I've been flying low. Dang, what's the number? See, and that's the thing. Like I come up here every single day and, and I'm smiling, I'm having a good time. Right, we. But banter. you be lying though, because I ask you how you are. You're like, I'm fine. I'm great. I'm no, I there. didn't. No, when you never asked me how I'm um, doing. When I saw you at Cinco de Mayo, I asked you, and you were like, I'm great. It's great. F1 weekend. It's out. We're outside. It's amazing. So you be oh, lying. Oh, I had me. a little tequila in me. Doing okay, that so he be lying to me. I, 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 I've, I've consistently been flying at a five the last month. Okay. And that's me being honest, right? Like, it's just business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's tough as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, the market's not great, the global economy. So that affects everybody that's out there trying to raise money or close deals, mm -hmm. right? Trying to keep everything going. Um, and then also personally, right? Like, just this, you know, I wouldn't say it's part of the transition because it's been four years. But, like, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, change in my life right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the last week, I would say, it's been clearer, and that feels good. And you know what helps me out? And this is why we built House of Athlete is literally taking care of myself. When I'm working out, when I'm taking doing a yoga class on Wednesday, I feel better. When I don't, and I'm eating like shit, I'm drinking, putting any cra crazy stuff in my body, I feel like crap, right? So I just got to get in a healthier rhythm and a better uh, routine. You got to get you at a solid seven. No, seven. That's low. That's that no, for I mean, me. For me, eight. Yeah, like eight. I, I, I'm, I'm eight. I was trying to. I was trying to make a gradual increase, not go from five to eight. I figured <laughs> we could go from five to seven, then to mm, eight. But right. if you want to go five to eight, we could do that. What about you, Corey? What's your number? I say my number is like an eight right now. Even yeah. though you're on the scooter, I respect yeah, facts, that. Facts. Yeah, Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, despite being on the scooter, like you know, typically we go through you know personal business and um, mental and whatnot. But I guess if if we take all of those numbers, put them in one score, I give myself an eight. You know, I thanks. Like that. Yeah, thanks, Miss Status Quo. Always room for improvement, but uh, just try to stay the course, right? Stay focused, keep working. So. What do you think you have to do to get yourself to a ten? Well, I feel like nobody's ever at a 10, Yeah, that's right? what I'm saying. I don't, well, well, look, I, I always, my answer for, because like I mentioned, we do personal, we do business, we do mental. I feel like my mental is consistently a 10. You can ask anybody who, who, who worked with me over on like wow. the House of Athletes side. And my logic there is like, I think we should all be at a 10 mentally, right? And, and by that, I mean like we, we shouldn't, you know, give up on the, on the idea or, the, or the, the thought that, you know, we can handle with whatever problem we face with, right? Like we have to acknowledge though that there's room for imp improvement for us personally, right? Like we, you might not be a 10 or even a nine or even an eight on most days personally, mm -hmm. but you gotta feel that mentally though, you can address all of like the, the adversity and all of that that you need to, you know, increase that number. Mm -hmm. And then business wise, of course, there should always be room for improve, you know, improvement there. I always want to be able to work on, on, uh, you know, like the, just the business aspect You're 10. of things. Yeah, you You're said 10 what, there. You look, yeah. I'm nah, man, like, like we were just saying, always room for improvement. But mentally though, we, we get 10 mentally though. I feel like I'm never a 10 mentally. Yeah. No. I just feel like 10 defines perfection and I don't feel like my mindset is mm -hmm. ever perfect. Yeah. I feel like the highest for me that I'll, I'll ever achieve is a nine and for mm -hmm. me that's good because I feel like 10 just means that there's nothing wrong. Right. And I feel like that's just not um, realistic. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like your mind always wanders, you're always wondering about what you can improve on, you're always thinking about things that you shouldn't, you're always feeling a little bit more down than maybe you should. But that's a, I feel like that's life. Um, I just feel like not allowing it to cons I feel like when you allow it to consume you yeah. is when it becomes problematic. I feel mm -hmm. like we all walk around with a level of worry and, mm -hmm. and you know, a little bit of sadness about certain things. I feel right. like that's natural. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's when it's in, um, in, in large scales is when it becomes consuming and that's when you have to go ahead and really check in with yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you with, with everything for the most part with everything you said. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think you can accomplish a 10. To really? me, accomplish a 10 is exactly what you said. Is under, a lot of people don't, they're not prepared for the lows. They're mm -hmm. not prepared or they don't realize that or they don't believe that you know they're not going to have financial troubles or their marriage isn't going to be hit with any adversity or their children may not get sick or their communities may not get rocked right so they walk around with walls when you walk around with mm. walls that hurts when you have boundaries around your life understanding that shit can happen but i'm prepared for it or i can talk i, I have a, a support system mm -hmm. um that's when 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 to me you're in you're in a sweet spot of life right so i think the 10 for me is when you actually are going through things, but you have a mental health 
uh, a practitioner or a counselor that you could call mm -hmm. or a doctor or a, a buddy or a sister that you can hit up. You know what I mean? Like you just got to have um, guardrails in place in life. And I love everyone in the chat sharing where they're at on their scale. Oh, that's we, dope. Really? We mm -hmm. see y'all. We receive it. We're sending you love, light, positivity. We hope that if you're anything below a seven, that you, you're going ahead and you're doing the things you need to do to go ahead and make yourself happier and lighter and brighter. But we see you. We acknowledge. Thank you for sharing with us. Mm -hmm. And we we receive that. That's amazing. And it, and it starts with us. Ashley, we'll, we'll, we'll move on here, um, get back to ball. Um, but it starts with us. Like, even when you came back from Mexico, you being vulnerable and sharing your story. Yeah. That was big. That was a low being for me. Yeah, that, that's great. We got to keep that up. Yeah. Ashley, I'm disappointed in you, too. Why? Let me bring you from, I'm going to bring you from an uh, eight. You say you're eight. I'm going to bring you from an eight to a six real quick. Okay. You didn't acknowledge my outfit today. I did acknowledge it. You I didn't say about I'm your with, Give me one to ten. How am I today? <laughs> that boy got the Supreme hat. I don't I got like the, the glasses. Gucci glasses. You don't? No. But outside of the glasses, I like the fit. Okay, because it's like simple. It's, you know, I'm going with the It looks little... like you're, it, you look like Wesley Snipes in uh, White Man Can't Jump. <laughs> Here, let's do this. <laughs> Ashley, those were some nice glasses that you had on yesterday. I look like Arthur. Do we have that, do we have that side by side? That picture blew up on social media. Yeah, I told you it was. But uh, they did say I wore them better, so mm -hmm. they beat did? that, Arthur. Do, do we have that? I don't know if we, if we don't BC, no problem, but if we can throw that side by You're side. You're not a up, circle frames great. person, are you, Ashley? You don't like the circle frames? You know, frames? I'm not a big circle. I feel like this is going to make me look like Elton John. Uh, oh, now we got another side by side. <laughs> you said Elton yeah, John. Let's do like, a side by side. I feel like Rocket, Rocket Man. All right, look there, Rick, so, oh, we can get a, um, so we can get that side by side, the Elton John. Yeah, that, oh, he. I think there is a picture of Elton either, throwing though. up the peace sign. Did you get it? Oh, no, we didn't on. get My it. My bad. I thought you guys got it. We got it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right where we oh, at man. um well look i'll tell you what ashley um you might need to check on julius randall see we see where he's at <laughs> julius is fine, <laughs> from a one to ten <laughs> well, that mentally, man laughing, mentally physically and personally <laughs> uh the heat they took a 3-1 lead in this series over the knickerbockers uh mm -hmm. the heat beat them last night 109 to 101 excuse me and jimmy butler he was the leading scorer he had 27 points and bam Adebayo added another 23 the big three of the Knicks, they, I mean, they had a, they had good games, right? Brunson had 32, um, Randall had 20, and Barrett had 24, but mm -hmm. unfortunately just wasn't enough to get the win. Now the series does go back to New York. Ashley, is it over for the Knickerbockers? Um, Come on, Ashley. No, you know. not yet. Not yet. I think the Knicks win at home. Um, my there's a, There was a few things that I noticed. I mean, one of them being that the bench, the Miami Heat bench, drastically outplayed the New York Knicks bench. Now, Emmanuel quickly, Emmanuel quickly is out of the lineup. Corey, I think. grow up, Corey. I think Emmanuel <laughs> quickly is out of the lineup, I think, for the rest of the season. He's, he had a boot on, so he's pretty much over and done okay. with. Um, I don't know. Tibbs is going to have to get a little bit more creative to go ahead and make game five go in the Knicks' favor. He's going to have to throw everything against the wall, maybe play some people who we haven't seen throughout the entire season. Um, do I think that the Knicks can still win this series? I don't know. Do I think that it's going to be a 4-1 gentleman sweep? No, I do think the Knicks win it at home. Um, but I'll let Brandon go ahead and, and make it say what he has to say because I, I I got a bone to pick and I'm not happy. You have a bone to pick. I got I, a bone. I, I got a bone to pick. I would say this, Ashley. Um, you took way too long to answer this question. I gave it honest answer. You, no, it's not an honest answer. It's my honest it's a, answer. It's an answer. You're, you're, you you came you came from the fans' perspective. I don't think the series is over. Ashley, it's over. Okay, that's and your you, opinion. And, and like, I Damn. called you yesterday. I called you during the game. You you screamed me. I did. I was watching and the then, game. And then, yeah, and then afterwards I said, "So why didn't you why, why didn't you call me after?" You're basically, you say you're licking your wounds. Yes, I was depressed. and processing, right? So you you had enough time to process last night for this moment. You knew it's going to be a question, so you should have came in here, looked <laughs> these people in the face, and said, "It's over." Ain't no quitting. It's over. Ain't no quitting New York. It's over. Ain't no Listen, and, and, I, and I disagree I with Stephen A. For, Smith. I, I don't like fitting nothing. Listen, I don't like what Stephen A. Smith did to Julius Randle. I don't like that. What he came out there and said. What, what was the statement he made? Can we please somebody please look that up? I don't know if it's on Complex Sports or something. I missed it. Yeah. But he said, "Hold on. What did he say? He said something wild." 
Yo, I liked his effort yesterday. He gave, like, I lo- Julius Randle was playing so strong to the basket, it, it just wasn't enough. Sometimes it's just not enough. Like, I don't know what Stephen A. was trying to accomplish by calling out Randall. They weren't allowed. One thing that's been annoying me, not just in this series, but in a series across the playoffs, I don't like the pick and choosing when it comes to physicality. Like, what are we doing? Are we in the playoffs or are we, like, playing powder puff football? You sound like, like with the refs and whatnot? Yeah, yeah. like, let them play. Mm-hmm. It's the playoffs. Like, some of these calls are so ticky-tack and juvenile and weak, like, I understand the frustration, and I'm not saying that it's the refs are leaning towards one side. I'm not. I'm just. I'm talking about across the playoffs in general. I don't like when you pick and choose when it's okay to be physical. If it's good for three quarters of basketball, let it be good for the fourth. Yeah. Like stop picking and choosing when they can get rough and when they can't. Like remove. You're too invested in the game. Mm-hmm. Back up. Like, leave, leave the physicality aspect. Unless someone's Ron or testing somebody, back the <laughs> hell up. Like, it's yeah. going to be rough. It's going to be moving. It's going to be a little bit of, you know, bumping and bruising. Like, yeah. it's playoff basketball. Yeah, it is not only playoff basketball, but we're talking about two franchises who have history. Back the hell up. Y'all are too invested <laughs> in the game. It's let me ask you. Let me ask you this question, Ashley. Uh, Stephen A. Smith says that the Knicks should trade Julius Randle. Mm. i rather have Carl Anthony. Towns than Julius Randle. Do you agree with him? They're huh. literally the same player. Oh, are mm. they? You? Are they not the same player? Well, well, go, but go ahead, go ahead. Who do y'all think I, Carl Anthony Towns is? Well, I, I, listen, I, I asked you, do you agree with him? No, I don't. I, don't I, actually, I think Julius Randle's more physical than Carl yeah, Anthony for sure. Towns. Right. But, yeah. Like, what are we doing? But like, Carl like, Anthony Towns is a much better shooter than Julius. When he's Randall. on. So, I mean, I, I guess that those are like, you know, that's what I would give Julius Randle and that's what I would give Carl Anthony Towns. And I'd mm-hmm. say with the way the Knicks are put together, they need more shooters. They but need a can, guy who can stretch the floor. You so. can get a shooter. I would say shooters are easier to get. Yeah. Than defensive players. I need a yeah. superstar. Well, in this uh, in this day and age, you need a superstar. On that, note, on that note, though, I wanted to ask you, Ashley, like, are you surprised Thibodeau didn't like go into the bench a little bit? Like, I saw yes. you tweet, like, why didn't he give Evan Fournier? Yes, a shot? he a shooter. Like, one of the things that I tweeted what early in the game, and I was upset. And this is what I'm talking about. In order for the Knicks to win Game Five, he's gonna go have to go ahead and throw things to the wall that he's never done before. Derrick Rose, Obi Toppin, for example, love Obi, mm. big fan, wanted him on the Knicks. You cannot have Obi Toppin out there shooting threes. Yeah, it is yeah, not, not his yeah. game. The three ball is not his game. Mm-hmm. Evan Fournier statistically is the best three right. pointer, three point shooter on the, team, on the yeah. Knicks. Mm. Why is he not seeing minutes? Yeah, none. You're in a must win situation. You're down Emmanuel quickly. Throw. You have Jalen Brunson on fifty on seventy five percent of an ankle. Throw what you have to, to, on the court and see what works. Why right. he's sitting there collecting dust is insane to me. Yeah. That is that's one of the issues that I had. He's getting out coached in ways that are that he can combat. But it's that stubbornness that sometimes he has where <clears throat> he sees the game in one way and it's trying to force a triangle into a circle hole. Mm-hmm. Like it's not going to work. What else can you do to make this situation work? That is one of my biggest frustrations with what I saw was the lack of adjustments on based on what was happening on the court in real time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Moving on, because the Knicks are done. <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> We're not going to move on. I got, I got smoke what? for mainstream media. Uh-oh. I need y'all to stop. It is... It is let me go ahead and word this correctly. Let me go ahead and word this. Brandon, stop bouncing that ball by my face. <laughs> <laughs> New Yorkers are extremely smart oh, when it Lord. comes to basketball. Like I said, this is not a football town. We're Baseball, yes, we have the Yankees, but basketball reigns supreme. It is the Mecca. And you can say a lot about Knicks fans that they're emotional and they're delusional and Which they're overly are. passionate and this and that. But one thing you can't say is that they don't understand the game of basketball. It is engraved in us from the very beginning. Before I knew what the triangle offense was, I was watching my dad play pickup basketball games at Chelsea Piers. I have been around the game since I was a little girl. And it is a disrespect 
to everything that New York basketball is, what it represents, and what the fans know about the game of basketball to equate any issues that we are having to the weather in Miami. That justification is oh, so disrespectful. Yeah. The game is played indoors. And if you want to go ahead and you know talk about the game and talk about why the Knicks are losing, talk about why the Knicks are losing. We're getting out-rebounded. We're getting out-coached. Our shot selection's off. But don't go ahead and dilute New York basketball and the intelligence of that fan base of my fan base mm. to something as trivial as the heat in Miami it's absolutely asinine and it's disrespectful cut it out we don't like it okay. simple as that okay mm. so before we move on Ashley uh you said mainstream media that's who you just talked to yeah um, we're on YouTube. Do you want to put any names on it? They know who they are. It's all over Twitter. ESPN's out here talking about, oh, it's the weather in Miami. That's the reason the Knicks are losing. <laughs> the game is played in an arena with air conditioning. Last time I checked, they're not playing outdoors. It's insane to use that as a justification. Knicks fans are smarter than that. Basketball is engraved in us. I used to walk past West 4th holding my mom's hand. I've seen some of the greatest basketball players of all time play at Rucker on 155th. I know basketball. We know basketball. It's engraved in this city. Do not disrespect our intelligence by justifying why we are losing to something as trivial and moronic as the weather in Miami. It is not a factor. Stop it. It's annoying. We don't like it. Like <laughs> Ashley, can I ask one more question? Mm -hmm. Could it be that you guys are too emotional? Now we're too emotional. The fan base. It's not that we're emotional. It's, You're representing the New York fan base right now. It's <laughs> frustrating. Listen, New Yorkers. I'm messing with you. Move on. No, no, let's go. No, let's no, go. No, I'm messing with you. No, we're done. Yeah, yeah, Mike Corey, no, as, as a Heat fan, that's no, not this, no, you don't find a problem with that? He's we're just done. messing with you because oh, okay. that message her. Yeah, message her. No, you, you definitely was talking your stuff. All right, 76ers and Celtics start off the action tonight at 730 with game five of their series. James Harden, he's coming off a 42-point night. Right? Does Vintage Harden return in Game 5? Or does the duo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown go off to uh, defend home court? I'm going to start with the Celtics, though. Um, Ashley, how do the Celtics swing momentum in their favor tonight? Where's the game? It's in Boston. Not, not, I hate, I hate using um, this phrase because I don't think the 76ers are, like, drastically below them when you use it. Not playing with their food. Mm -hmm. Um... Boston, and this is something that I said about the Atlanta series, they have a very bad habit of playing down to their competition. You're home. You have a lot more weapons at your disposal that have been consistent throughout this NBA season. Mm -hmm. Use them. Make the adjustments and use what you have because you have a lot. If they don't, they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. But I, I, I'm leaning towards the Celtics getting things back into their favor. That's that's where I'm going with this one. Yeah. Listen, it comes down to coaching. We talked about this yesterday, and, you know, I can't really peel back all the layers here. I, you know, I don't have that type of sophistication around basketball. Um, but it comes down to coaching, you mm. know, and it comes down what, to Doc Rivers, what he's going to do. We saw James Harden come out in game one without Joel Embiid and do his thing. Then they came out make made adjustments on the defensive side. Uh, really pressured uh, James Harden, forced him into some, you know, uncomfortable positions. And then Doc Rivers, Flowers, made some – Doc Rivers, Sam Cassell, James Harden, Joel Embiid, somebody in that organization made some adjustments. And then you saw James Harden getting back to the basket and also finding his shot. Uh, so I say that because at this point of the series, both mm -hmm. teams know each other. Like we didn't gave you, I didn't gave you my best shot, Ashley. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't threw everything at you, right? Like, what, what else do you have in the bag? What other mm -hmm. tricks do you have from the offensive side, defensive side? It's all out there. So whatever you throw at uh, a James Harden or Joel Embiid, they're going to be able to adjust in real time, and it'll make it easier for Doc Rivers. I, I, I think, I think the. Uh, I think the 76ers win tonight. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, talk, I, say, I, talk. I think Harden, it, it was, I think it was Harden cools off tonight. No, yeah. I, listen, yeah. he wants it. Ashley, to stay here. Can you please take your analytical brain off real quick? No. Please, just for one second. One okay. second. Okay. Or just one game. Okay. Let's just, let's just gut. Eyes. Look at the athlete in his eyes like this. Okay? Look at him and mm -hmm. see. All right, does he have the eye of the tiger? <laughs> Seriously, no, think about it. Athletes in moments. 
as have you ever been covering the game and the guy walked by and you was like, yo, he's in his zone right now or mm -hmm. he's feeling it. He's feeling good. Mm -hmm. So I say that because the moment is so big right now. We're talking about legacy for James Harden. We're also talking about legacy for Joel and B, but more so James Harden, right? Like, I don't even know, like, how are we going to talk about James Harden when it's all said and done? Do you want to be the guy known as the guy that didn't get it done, like, and, and thrown in that Charles Barkley conversation, one of the greatest players the game has ever seen, and you didn't get a ring? So I think James Harden, he he, he feels how close it is. He can smell it. He can taste it. Pause. Um, it, he stay with me. Just stay with me. <laughs> He, 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 so he, he feels like he's so close that he's going to get it done. He's going to find a way. Like you just said, you opened up by asking. Corey just opened up by saying, vintage Harden. Do we see vintage James Harden? We haven't seen that all year. And then all of a sudden he's able. Why do you think he's able to turn it on and, and, and in a series drop 40 plus in two games? So can you see James Harden just being in the zone and saying, you know what? I'm in my bag. No. I'm going to take advantage of this. No. You you put too much. Um, yes, I do. Yep, go there. You put too much stake. Yes. In storylines, like <laughs> this is not Coach Carter. Like it's not. We're not gonna get the inspirational, you know, uh, montage of you know the layups and the dunks and oh my God, the last shot and it's oh they went like that's this is real life. This is this is stats. <laughs> these are numbers. These are these are real life situations and real life situations are they barely won with a 14 point lead last game. They yeah. almost blew that. Yeah, I mean, they like lost. A, they like lost a 14 point lead and won by one. And that's because of a bad decision to not put the ball in Marcus Smart's hand. So if we look at the stats and the numbers, yep. they lean in favor of the Boston Celtics. Now, I'm not saying yeah, that the 76ers are not making this a series, but if you look at team for team, if you look at James Harden's consistency or lack thereof, you're putting a lot of stake in him waking up one morning that's and right. being yeah. like, that's right. James, that's right. you, that's right. me, we go out there, that's we're right. going to cook, we're going to do it, vintage Harden, OKC Harden, <laughs> uh, Houston Rockets Harden, we got this, I got this, we're going to do it, yeah, yeah, like that's not real life, like it's not, <laughs> it's not real life, like it's weird that you have so much shit in that, oh, man. it's not real. Hey, like, listen, hold on, was that good, did she, did she do, that was, that was, <laughs> was that good? <laughs> it's <laughs> not real. Hold on, first <laughs> off, like, I, I just want to highlight your, uh, your acting. Oh, that thanks. was really good, Thank right? You. you should get back into <laughs> acting, right? We have a clip of of of, um, of Ashley's uh, debut as a as an actress back in the day, so that that was awesome. But hold on, Ashley, mm -hmm. that's exactly how it goes. Jesus, okay, <laughs> I can't. that's exactly how it goes. Let me put my glasses back on. I don't my eyes, the sun. That's exactly how it goes, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Yes, words of affirmation. <laughs> you. You'll be surprised what you see from athletes. I, I've played with Devin Hester. Devin Hester, forgive me if, if you feel uncomfortable. I've, I've, said, I've told this story several times. But Devin Hester was in a slump. Like, this is Devin Hester, the greatest kick returner, punt returner the game has ever seen, especially the game has ever seen, playing in Chicago. Before they, they kicked the ball off, oh, Soldier Boy, do it. Have you ever seen him in <laughs> yeah. real time? Yeah, oh, my goodness. That, yeah. The whole stadium they got – Everybody, all ethnicities, standing up, doing Soldier Boy, telling, "Woo!" <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, this is this is Devin Hester. He's on a bus, Ashley. He's in a slump, and he's just talking to himself, watching his highlights from high school, from college, doing anything he can from a visual, visualization standpoint, from a words of affirmation standpoint, to get back in the rhythm. Right? He ended up playing another five, six years and then ended up breaking a couple more records. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that's exactly what James Harden is doing right now. Whether he's looking in the mirror or he's going to sleep and he's just like, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's go, legs. <laughs> Let's go, legs. Let's go. That's exactly mm -hmm. what happens for athletes. That's exactly. That's, are you being, are you being, I'm being like funny right now? I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm you, not. You, this is what I'm saying. I thought you when you said stock, when you were going in, I was like, yeah, you're right. I thought you were going to say more of... The stuff that we don't talk about that you can't um, you can't quantify, right? Like it's easy for us to look at statistics and say, okay, this is where this player is at. This is what he's been doing over the last couple couple um, couple weeks or the last couple years. 
but there are moments where guys rise to the occasion and that's something that you can't quantify like how do you have like a, a joker who he's different he's in his prime he's the he's an all-star he's an mvp the team needed for him to drop 53 he dropped 53 right lebron james lebron james if he have to go for 50 the the, the next game he'll go for 50 right you saw this with, and, and I'm not going to get it. We're not going to start this whole debate again. But it's the same thing happening with the Suns, right? Like Devin, Booker, and KD, for them to have a chance against the Nuggets, they got to be exceptional. And so you get your best out of your best players in these biggest moments. And that's all I'm saying is sometimes these guys understand the moment and they take advantage of it. And that's what I expect from James Harden. So no, I got to ask you guys a question. Can the 76ers win without James Harden dropping 40 points, though? No. Because, I mean, they haven't been able to prove that, you know, in this series. If Joel Embiid drops 50, like he have a joker night, he is the MVP. How does how's his MCL feeling? How does his knee feel? Yeah. Now, Embiid can go out there and carry him, but he got to have one of those Embiid big, big MVP games. Yeah. But, no, like, they don't, the Celtics They're are the role, better team. I said, yeah, the role players on the Sixers definitely got to step up. Maxi again, Harris, Melton. I think they need to get a good offensive, um, you know, performance from all three of them. Game one. And yeah. I want to make it clear, I'm not diminishing <laughs> the athlete's mentality. Mm -hmm. It the will is what I the say. will to win is real. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. But it's not always enough in a seven game series. We're not talking about a one off. I agree with you there. We're not talking about March Madness where it's a one and done. And we've seen some crazy things happen. Yeah. We're not talking about the Super Bowl where it's a one and done situation. We're talking about a seven game series. And that is why they say in the course of a seven game series, the better team will always win because the will to win is enough. one thing, but it's not enough. Mm. So, yeah, you'll get a vintage James Harden performance in game one. We're like, oh, crap. Here we go. And we mm. said that he but, wouldn't do it again. Though. And, he would, and we said he wouldn't and do he it again. It. And he'll give you a version of it again. But it's not enough in a seven-game series to just have the will to win. There's multiple factors. And if you don't have the majority of those factors, it's not I, going I, to I, lean in your favor. I, That's I, all I'm saying. I, I agree with you, Ashley. And I'm, I'm, I'm more of a gambler. Like, even I swear, my entrepreneur spirit, like, I'll mm -hmm. bet on myself. And so, like, I guess that's where it comes from for me, mm -hmm. right, is, like, I love that storyline. I love the storyline that everybody say you can't do it, James Harden. You can't do it, uh, uh, KD and, and Devin Booker. CP3 went down again. Mm -hmm. LeBron, you're too old. I love that story. I'm always rocking with those guys, right? It, to me, it makes for a better story, and I think that I've always been an underdog in my life. Now we're getting into some therapy. You mm -hmm. be my therapist right now? I guess. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's why my point of view is always aimed that way when we talk sports. Even when we get into football, see, it's going to be the same way. Right? I'm always going to find a way to to how like how this team or this player can, you know. So like, yeah, I, you're, you're right with what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. The better team is the better team is always going. They should win in their should. seven game mm -hmm. series. But sometimes, like even like, like even Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant was done. Rest in peace to the legend. That, oh my goodness, miss you. A lot of us, all of us, sports world. But Kobe Bryant, his last game. But think about what you're saying. Go. His last game, I, I know it's you, 60. But who thought and But who thought he could barely walk? I, I agree with you completely. I, I shed tears watching that right, game. Right. Kobe Bryant, S I make no secret, my favorite basketball player of all time, him and Allen Iverson, the reason I fell in love with the game. He's on my pants right now. What I'm saying well, is... Those pants are fire. It's him and Jordan playing each other on my pants right now. But what I'm yeah. saying mm -hmm. is, is if that were a seven-game series, Kobe's not doing that every night. And it was going to take more than you. just Kobe's will to win I mentality to win a seven game. I series. agree with you. I agree with you. But there, what, what we what we have seen in the past, though, players play exceptionally well through series as well. We saw that with Jimmy Butler. I don't know if he's still on the heater or not, but like he averaged, what, 35 or 37? Yeah, he's, not, he's not averaging that, but he still has gone. You know what I'm saying? So like, and, but he's more in his prime. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say he's in his prime, but maybe maybe close, maybe still in it, maybe. But he was able to turn it up a notch. Uh, D Wade, and it, and it goes back to what you're like. I'm I'm, I'm just highlighting some of these great, greatest moments that made me feel great as a competitor and as an athlete. But even D Wade, remember his last game mm -hmm. back in Miami, exceptional. He jumps he jumps on the table. Right. Like I, I want that moment. You what, what, did, what, did, what, did, what, did, what did the big ticket say? Uh, Kevin Garnett say when, when they won? Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Oh. But use use Miami as an example. We talk about Jimmy Butler in that Milwaukee series. He had an incredible series, right? Yep. 
And that last game was that was a, a game of will to win, right? Yeah. He willed them to that next game that ultimately yes, brought right, them, yes, right? right? Yes, right? Look at them now against this Knicks, this, the Knicks right now, mm -hmm. my Knicks team. The will to win is not just with one player. It's with the whole team. Yeah. So that is beneficial. If Jimmy Butler had the will to win by himself and facing a Knicks team, they wouldn't be up three to one. The will to win is the team as is a team mentality yeah, as a whole. Jimmy can have monumentous yeah. games that go ahead and and add wins to the column. But if the whole team is not on that same page, they won't win a series. It, it takes more than one yeah, person. So, so, so go back to the 76ers. That's what that's what we're talking about. If you can throw the question back up, there was like basically what the Celtics got to do to gain momentum back. And and when they started this series, what did I say? That, what did I say? I liked after the first game. I love the confrontation between mm -hmm. the players on the sideline. P.J. Tucker, mm -hmm. right, yelling at his guy, and that clip that went viral. Mm -hmm. What the. What did he say? Mm -hmm. He's like, I guess he's like, what the f you doing, right? Yeah, what the, what, the, what, the, what, the, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Like I still that, don't know what he was mad about. Right, well, right. they they <laughs> what was ended up issue? coming out afterwards, and and the, the players talked about. I don't know which you know. It was basically, um, PJ Tucker came to the sideline and told told Young, and he's like, Yo, you better get the next two rebounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they had a little confrontation. I don't know how I got to like, what what are you talking about? Yeah. And and so they were afraid that PJ was probably going to grab him mm -hmm. right but that didn't happen and then they came out and said well look that's what happens when you're a captain mm -hmm. because next he went and grabbed the next two rebounds mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the will that's what i'm talking about so i highlighted that moment and i also highlighted what james harton so what that told me for the pj tucker was like the intensity like by any means necessary yeah like I, I'm willing to go there. I'm willing to slap you if you're my teammate. If you not, yeah. if you not, if you don't have the same will as me in this moment, if you don't get it. Mm -hmm. So that's what that moment showed me. Also, after that same game, you had James Harden who just had 45 points. Everybody is celebrating. These are all losers, right? Like they're losers. They haven't done what PJ Tucker has done. They haven't seen what James Harden sees. They don't feel what James Harden feels. My career is about to be over. D we only get so many of these opportunities. James Harden told everybody, get off the court. Get in the locker room. What are we celebrating for? That's a loser mentality. No, go there. We got the, the, the series ain't over. You know what that was reminiscent of? Kind of, a little bit. Mm. Remember Kobe Bryant? He said the job's not finished. The job's not finished. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you seen James, you seen LeBron James do the same thing last night. He embraced uh, 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 the kid, the fourth. Walker. Lonnie Walker. Walker. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, right? And then what? Everybody, let's go. Time to go. Job's not finished. Job's Celebrate not for finished. what? Yeah. The job's not finished. Job, job's not finished. So, so the whole James Harden thing, right? Like, woo! It, it goes back to when you say the will, right? I think that this entire team, they that that will exists throughout the entire team, and even the storyline for Doc Rivers, Ash, like Doc Rivers. You don't think he wants to overcome? You know that that I can't I can't get it done in post. He wants to beat the mm -hmm. allegations. I feel like you're giving Doc a lot of credit, which is good for you. Yeah, yeah, that's. But, but you, hear, I, you, hear, you hear my disclaimer. I'm like, is it Sam Cassell? Is it? Uh, the I guys? didn't think. I didn't think Doc did anything uh, extraordinary to win that mm -hmm. last game. I don't think he. I think that was all James Harden. Right. Yeah. Well, well, look. Before we move on to Suns and Nuggets, Brandon, you brought up will to win. You brought up leadership, passion, right. and then you brought up PJ Tucker. That's right. right. So via the, uh, Fox Sports, right? Recently, PJ Tucker said he believes his strong leadership makes him underpaid and this is a quote from pj tucker he says that's why i don't get paid enough people don't understand that i'm a social worker and an nba role player so you talk about you know what he contributes to the team outside of just what he does in the stat sheet right and what he does on the floor like is this something that that's just prevalent just in sports in general right like 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 what are your thoughts on pj tucker's comments Brandon? before i go i'm gonna go to ashley why are you making that face because i hear what he's saying Veteran leadership's invaluable in the mm -hmm. locker room. You talk about Udonis Haslam, mm -hmm. you talk about mm -hmm. Iguodala, you talk about other guys across the league. Vince Carter, when he was but still playing. With that said, organizations, owners, mm -hmm. aren't giving out max contracts because you're a good cheerleader. You know what I mean? They should, though. Mm, they shouldn't. Because and I'm not saying, say, let me let me be clear here. And I'm not saying Max, sorry to cut you off. And I'm not calling PJ Tucker a cheerleader. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying Max. I'm saying they should get, they can get more. I don't, but the thing is, is like, 
while again i'm a firm believer that every locker room should have a vet you know the knicks we have derrick rose um i think every locker room needs a vet especially when you have a team of young players that's right because they're the most impressionable and sometimes they lose focus the quickest with that said that doesn't always you're still paid on productivity mm -hmm. and if you're not giving me mm. productivity mm. For me to just go ahead and pay you X amount because you're a good locker room guy, I love it, but being a locker room guy doesn't put points on the board. You're missing mm. it, Ashley. You're that's no, just you're that's wrong. that's mm. that's, no, that's just my you. that's just my that's just my take. Being and a good it, locker room guy is important, mm -hmm. but that's not gonna be the All thing right. that helps us win a seven game series. I'm okay, just saying. Okay, hold on, I'm hold just on. saying. That's your just thoughts, me. Listen, I, I listen, I, I I appreciate your perspective, but you are 100% wrong here. And let me tell you why. All right. Go back to what we just talked about. P.J. Tucker in game, after game, during game one. Mm -hmm. You asked, you said, well, what, what was it about? I still don't know why he was yelling at the player. Because he told him, go get the next two rebounds. That was leadership. Even it took that. Like, in, that, in those moments in the locker room, sometimes you got to look at, a, at your teammate like that and be like, no, are you with me? Do you understand this moment? You saw Tom Brady time year after year scream, throw his tablet, throw his helmet. No, guys, this is what we're doing. He goes out there, gets the next two rebounds that totally changed the game. There's an argument that if P.J. Tucker isn't on this team, right, in this moment, that they're not even tied in the series 2-2. So when you talk about production, it's not about his production. P.J. Tucker, we know P.J. Tucker for dope fits, dope sneakers. Mm -hmm. He can shoot the corner three, and he plays aggressive defense. That's P.J. Tucker, right? Where he's a superstar is, is in those moments, because now you're making your other guys better. You're producing because I'm here and I'm helping you, right? Kobe Bryant was the same way with, with, with some of the players. Well, no, man, I can't say that. You know, there's an argument that Kobe's in the mics, you know, maybe they're too, too hard on their teammates. But there's an argument that P.J. Tucker, if he's not on this team, they're not even in this position. Well, and it's the, PJ... things that, it's the things that we don't see, right? And so I believe that P.J. Tucker is definitely worth way more than what he's getting paid now. I agree with P.J. Tucker. I feel like P.J. Tucker is a bad example of this conversation because I think he does a lot that necessarily doesn't show up on the stat sheet. But he, I feel like he's a bad example to use in this conversation because he gives you productivity that does affect the game. What I'm referring to is someone like No Shade, love him, like a Haslam who doesn't play. No, it's the same. Ashley, no, it's I'm not. Telling you. It's Ashley, not you're the missing same. it. Ashley, it's not you gotta, the same thing. Ashley, Ashley. It's not the same thing. Ashley, we're talking about a PJ Tucker who still gets minutes. Ashley, we're talking about still leadership. Sees court I'm time. telling you. It's not the same thing, Brandon. Let me, let me, we're let me tell you this. I hate to do this. I hate to do this and I love you. I hate to do this and I love you, Ashley, but I was in a locker room for so many years, my entire career. I'm telling you this, this matters. Haslam. Haslam is the guy that's telling, you know, Hero, looking at him and saying, stop fucking partying. Excuse my language. Stop, stop partying. You don't you think need Jimmy to be Butler's doing, doing that? Jimmy Butler is doing it as well. So but Haslam is a totally, like, come on. I'm, I, I, I'm just going to tell you that Haslam, Haslam may be more valuable than a P.J. Tucker. What? Because he's a, what you are looking for is, this is what you're looking for in an organization I'm t from a leadership standpoint. Right. There's a reason why he's still there. Right. What you want is you want an echoing and messaging in an organization. Right. A lot of times it can come from ownership. Then it trickles down to management. And then from management, it trickles down to the coaching and from coaching. How do we get it in the locker room? When you have all four of those things aligned, then that's where you have everybody on the same page. So Haslam is that guy. Haslam is an extension of ownership. Haslam is an extension of management. Haslam is an extension of coaching. So what that means is Haslam's the guy. He's not a, you know, he's, he's still him. He's still a, a, a player's player. He's still a guy's guy, but he's also the one in the locker room that's saying, yo, eliminate distractions. The reason why a lot of these teams, because like, let's, let's face it, mm -hmm. guys that make it to the pro level, NFL, NBA, super talented. 
special, some of the world's greatest. The thing that separates the guys from having a great career and just a subpar career or flaming out fast or even the teams is the guys that can't eliminate distraction, overcome those obstacles. So having those veterans in the locker room that's already been through it so many times, being able to navigate guys is special. Now you take a guy with the leadership skills and the tonality to be able to look at a guy and say, nah, young, and we going this way. That's where the value comes in, Ash. And I so, don't know what you're arguing, though. I'm not deba- I'm not arguing that. Well, never, you said you said like Haslam. You said you. I'm up saying Haslam. that if we're talking about out of the two, if we're talking about underpaying guys who do things that may not show up on a stat sheet, I want to more lean towards PJ Tucker being underpaid than Udonis Haslam. PJ Tucker still sees the court. He still he still is productive in the course of a game. I'm not discrediting the value of Udonis Haslam. I have been one from the jump who says that if you're not a Miami Heat fan or you don't live in Miami, you cannot fathom what he means to that team. Bam Adebayo has said time and time again that Udonis Haslam has been pivotal in his development. So why'd you bring his name up? Because what I'm saying is, is when we're talking about payment, when we're talking about being underpaid, right. I'm not somebody who thinks that a Udonis Haslam is underpaid. I think a P.J. Tucker's underpaid because he sees the court. He plays. He may not give you X amount of points, but he does things that affects the course of a game. So that's why I said P.J. Tucker is more of the conversation of being underpaid than a player like a Udonis has. And we're talking about two different type of locker room guys. And that's the only thing that I said is the difference here. I think they're both instrumental so, to their team, but one does actually I would produce say this. on the court. All right, let me, like, all right, you guys are owners. So I'm going I'm to say this. Uh, UD, Udonis Haslam, is making $2.5 million. Right. He's right? not underpaid to me. So there's an argument for me. My argument is that I can say he's worth five million. Mm. And the reason why I can say he's worth five million or maybe even a little bit more is because what makes the what makes the what makes the What do you think before makes you the, let me ask you, you no, 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 what do you no, think no, he no, should no, be paid? Listen. Give me a contract number before you it dive be into five. that. I'm, I already said five million. So you think he should be making five so million dollars? Let, let, can I okay. So what makes the Miami Heat what makes the Miami Heat the Miami Heat right now in special? Help me out. You're you're a Heat fan. It's just like the foundation that they've built, right? Like the core, just values that they have. Like Come on, defense. what is we're it? Playing hard, we're, huh? play, we're playing hard. We're playing hard, and we're going to play defense. Who, who's the one that's doing that? It's Haslam. What? Haslam set the tempo. Haslam sets the tempo all year, around, all year long in practice and even on the games. He's the one on the, on the sideline that's fighting the other players. You get out of line, I'm stepping in. He almost got in a fight a couple weeks ago. So you think the foundation of the Miami Heat is because of Udonis Haslam? He's an extension of it. They, so I'm glad Corey said it as a, as a Heat fan. Been down here his whole life. Defense. They work hard. They, they're they tough. So yeah, Jimmy Butler is an extension of that, but that comes from Haslam. Haslam is the one. That's why they keep Haslam. Think about Pat Riley. He's an extension of the man. Like I said, ownership and management. Pat mm-hmm. Riley is he not? You know Pat from the, the, Pat the Riley, New York baby. days. He's tough. He his teams are going to play defense. He's a no nonsense, no nonsense guy. You need that rabbit in the locker room. You need that rabbit on your team yeah. that can be an extension of that. Here's what we're on. Here's our our core values. This is how we're going to play as a team. We're going to be tough. Fast, physical, strong, et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, so Ashley, values that's... will exist when Haslam's gone. No, it don't. No, that it don't. A, that's literally no, the culture no, of don't. the Miami Heat. No, Heats. Ashley, <laughs> you're not listening to me. Ashley, that's why, that's why I'm trying to say to you, like, that's why I tried to say earlier, what happens in the locker room when you lose those guys, you kind of forget. Like, okay, for example, Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll, football. His entire career, you go back to when he was in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns. When he was uh, the head coach of the New England Patriots, Pete Carroll was always, we're going to run the ball, we're going to play great defense. And I would tell you right now, since he lost the Legion of Boom, the, that, that culture is totally different now. I was there, right, and you can see it. So when you lose guys that are extensions of you, and, 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 and you, 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 the, it affects the locker room. And so... I, I don't want to be the dead horse because I'm really passionate about this. And Adonis Haslam is the very best of the culture of the Miami Heat. He represents it to its epitome. But 
the culture of the Miami Heat has existed for as long as I can possibly remember and my dad could possibly remember. They have always been the culture of de- that, that defense has always been their culture. That has been mm. what Pat Riley and that organization has built this team on mm. finding guys who may not be, you know, top draft picks, making them gritty, making them tough. They have one of the toughest conditioning programs, if not the toughest conditioning program in the NBA. That has always been their culture. Now, while mm. I agree with you, Udonis Haslam is a pitiful, a pit is a, a the epitome of that right. and he is a pivotal part of the development of this young team that we have seen he has been there since d wade he's seen this team go through transitions that's not going to no longer exist once he leaves that's it the foundation yes, it of this Actually, team that's, it's that's, culture but that's it's why defense. but that's why you know to start this this what started this conversation in this debate was pj tucker talking about how valuable he is, right? And that he's probably worth more. And there's a the problem is this. The problem is when you're an owner, right? <clears throat> you got to manage the PNL, you got to manage the budget. So you have a, a veteran that's coming in and there's a veteran minimum, right? So the veteran minimum, you can pl- have a guy who's not contributing a lot and he's making a million dollars, but he's not, He it's over. He's not really going to, he doesn't have tremendous upside. But then you go get a rookie and now this rookie, he's making $400,000 a year, but his upside is there. This dude, not only can he potentially turn into something, develop into something, but he can also contribute maybe five to six years, right? Where this other guy may be one or two years, right? So what, what's happening with our, our teams, right? It's they're going younger and they're devaluing what we're talking about, and that's leadership. So that's the problem there. I agree with, uh, with P.J. Tucker. I think that there's... Other guys out there, Vince Carter was a guy. Even D. Wade towards the end of his career. You, and you mentioned uh, D. Rose. There's a reason why you keep those guys together because you need them to be an extension into the locker room. I agree with you completely, mm. but I'm simply saying, do you think a P.J. Tucker and Udonis Haslam should be making the same amount? Uh, no, I, I'm not. That, but that's, that's not that's the my only. That's my but only that's thing. Not, but that's not. But no. that's, that, that wasn't. No, no, I do not. I do but not. That, but I do not. The, but, but I think I think if, if, if U.D., Right, like I don't know what the veteran minimum is in the NBA, but making 2.5, what is it? 2.7. It's 2.7. Okay, so it's 2.7 now. So 2.7 million dollars. I think I think there's an argument that he's worth another million or two million dollars. I you really think do. He should be making five million dollars. I don't think he should be making anything. I think he can. He's worth that. Like me, if I was a if I was an owner, if I was a manager, right? Like that's one of the hardest things to do is keeping your culture. Right. I agree. Hold on. The hardest thing to do is is creating culture, setting culture and keeping culture. And that's why I keep saying brand uh, extensions throughout the entire building. It's not just it's not just um, in the locker room. You also want you'll go you'll walk around some of these organizations, go in the cafeteria, you go to the parking uh, attendants, you go to the grounds crew, you go into the front office and you're like, hey, Miss Mary, how long you been here? Twenty, twenty five years. You go into the equipment room. How long you been here? 15, 16 years? Mm-hmm. There's people that have been in these organizations for a very long time. Why? Because the owners and the management trust them. They know they're going to be the ones, when I'm not looking, you guys are going to maintain what we've already created. So when the D. Wades aren't here anymore, when the Alonzo Mornings aren't here anymore, when they come and go, we still have a chance to sustain this. And, and so you can do it in so many areas. And one of the areas where I think the where our owners can do a better job is in the locker room with guys because man Ashley you know this too I agree completely I, and, and you know this too Ashley look how many times have we seen athletes just f up the bag you know what I mean out partying doing the wrong things aren't taking care of their bodies right so who's going to be that person that peer to peer that's going to be able to tell them like yo let's course correct over here you know what I mean so I agree with that completely. My whole point in this is saying, and we can move on from this, is simply saying, I think that when you have a vet who's more like an extension of the coaching staff Mm -hmm. and is more like an extension of the front office and the culture of the team, whatever that culture may be, but is not so much a player, he should not be getting paid like one. And P.J. Tucker, to me, is not that type of locker room guy because he is an extension of all of those Mm -hmm. things, but he's also still a player. 
Haslam is an extension of everything he's that's like a great. Player's coach. Is everything that's great about everything about the Miami Heat, but he's not a player, but, so he should okay. not be paid like okay, that. That's, all, that's you, my okay, only okay, point. No, oh, let me that's ask my you only point. Let me ask one more question. Okay, yeah, great, great, great. I love you. Real quick, real quick. <laughs> yeah, real quick. Brandon Marshall, Ashley Nicole Moss, <laughs> and Corey Holmes. This is Faction Talk. Channel 103, Sirius XM, and also on YouTube. Thanks for joining the discussion. We love each other. Sometimes I win, and I feel like I'm winning this debate today, and majority of the time, uh, Ashley wins. But I'm going to get better. I'm going to get sharper. I'm going to start communicating more clearer, right? And I can't wait to football season. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I kind of know how you're going to attack football season. But mm -mm. Be before we move on, I, I, let, me, let me ask you this, Ashley. So if you have a guy that can, that comes in, mm -hmm. right, you tell me the value of a guy that can come in and take these young players that have so much distractions, women, drugs, mm -hmm. partying, except games, ga like gamers, mm -hmm. right, that don't know how to be pros. It's invaluable. And, okay. But you don't – but it's okay, invaluable, okay. but you don't give – Somebody if it's invaluable, who, then why can't it's invaluable? But unfortunately, you don't pay somebody like that ten million dollars a if, year. But what if it if they're not but actually what if, playing? But, but what if it increases production, right? So like I say that, and you can use it in so many different areas. PJ Tucker mm -hmm. snaps on his teammates. Some people are like, what is PJ doing? That's bad leadership. He tells them to go get two more. You get the next two rebounds. Mm -hmm. He gets the next two rebounds. Right, that's 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 giving your, your your that's giving you a better opportunity to succeed. So I hear you completely. And in a perfect world where there's no such thing as salary caps, then you just hand everybody a contract. But in a world in the NBA in the business of sports where there are salary caps, you cannot play somebody. Okay. You cannot pay somebody. $10 million, $13 million because he motivates the team, but he does not give you any well, let me, let me show you. Let me show That's you how, unfortunately let me show you, the reality. Let me show you how I can debunk that. Ben Simmons. What if there mm -hmm. was a guy in a locker room that can, that can relate and get through to Ben Simmons, help him out in so many ways? And I can go so many other players, guys that are getting paid 30, 40. We just talked about Jordan Poole. He had zero points last night, yeah. right? So, like, you're paying these guys, but they're not producing. Sometimes, Ashley, there's guys and, and, and ladies in the locker room that can get through to the stars to make them even better stars. So, would you, you so you're telling me you would pay some, you would take up a roster spot and pay somebody. Twenty million dollars to be Jordan Poole. You're, you're throwing I'm out just, big I'm numbers. Just, you're just throwing out numbers at this point. Let's say ten. Let me give you ten. It's ten. Ten's light. It's not about. It's not. It's not. Light. It's, it's about pay, what this person means to your locker. You would pay somebody ten million dollars, let's say for three years, mm -hmm. to be Jordan Poole's therapist. It's not therapist. Mm -hmm. you're not, what, I'm, it's not, it's does not, not play a single minute of I'm, basketball. Does not gonna. Does not go ahead and give you I would any pay, time I would on the pay, court. I would pay a guy like Haslam. I would pay a guy like PJ Tucker. I would pay a guy like Vince Carter. I would pay guys. I would pay a guy like uh, Stephen Jackson. But you, realize... I would pay a guy like Matt Barnes. I would pay guys like that, right? Above market value for them, right? Because everyone else is going to say, Haslam, you're worth two seven. But to me, in this locker room, you're worth four, five, six million dollars. I would pay them more because what happens is we pay a lot of guys but then they don't produce. And sometimes they don't produce because they might be just partying too much. They might be doing drugs. They might not under, they, 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 they've never been battle tested. So they've never been in these championship moments or in, 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 in these games in the trenches where they felt that and, and didn't know they can come out on the other side. But, but you, you have a better realize, guy say, yo, youngin, yo, youngin, we been, Brandon, I've been here before. Do this and you're going to be good. But you do realize in a, the business of sports. I'm telling you, I don't know. You know, I love the business on, of sports. When, when there's salary caps, by paying somebody seven million dollars for example that's right who's not giving you any productivity on the court but is a presence in the locker room and that's is right. and a voice of reason in a player who's going through a rough time who's making 120 million dollars a year you are taking money away from that's a player right. who can actually put points on the board that's that right. does that's not how that works in a perfect it, world honestly, it's don't say that don't say that's that. not don't nobody would, nobody in their right mind would do you that how it works nobody in their right mind would do that brandon Ashley. no organization Ashley. in their right mind would do that Ashley. you're going to take money out of Dame Lillard's, Dame, let me use this for you're example. Not, no, you're, you're going to take, is, you're you're gonna gonna take to money out of CJ McCollum's pocket to give it to Udonis Haslam just so that Udonis Haslam can go ahead why is, and why is lean UD, the locker room. Why is UD? I'm just using that. Those are the <laughs> names that we've been talking. I'm just using as an example. You're going to do that. 
Actually, just so he can be in his I've ear. I've experienced it from the inside. That's insane, Brandon. <laughs> it's not insane. That's Ashley, insane. I played, no, I played on, 13 guys. years in the that's National in, Football that's League. In, you can't take money Ashley, out I of play, the pocket Ashley. of an active player so that one player who's going through a tough time has a support system. That's people, let's call a general manager. Let's call a general manager right now. Let's ask. Let's ask. Let's let's do this. Let me call. Let me call somebody. Hold on. No, I certainly see both sides, though. Hold on one second. Let's let's sides. Corey, let's while he's dialing, let's go ahead. I, no, no, no. I, let's keep let's let's keep see, right here. I don't see how that makes Ashley, sense. Ashley, that's let's that's see, how you see build this... culture. That's how you build culture, and that's how you build, you know, uh, sustainability is by investing in the right guys. It is. You were right. It's a it's a sal there's salary cap. You have to manage it all, and you have to put teams together, chemistry, continuity, and you may have a budget. But you have to have leaders. I'm not. And sometimes I'm not, your leaders aren't your I'm biggest not contributors. But I'm not debating that you have to have leaders. You have never heard me say you don't need veteran leadership in the locker room. I'm simply I'm saying you're talking about paying them X manager, amount of and, money. And I'm saying that's unrealistic when you have guys you have to pay who are actually okay. giving you productivity. Okay. Now, if you have a vet like a PJ Tucker, even who, you about, can actually but play. Think about, but that's think a about, different conversation. Think about what Aaron Rodgers said last year, and and I, listen, I'm a, I'm enjoying this conversation. So you know, it's all love between us all the time. Um, damn, mm. nobody. Man, they're not coming let in me clutch hit you, you back today. in 30 minutes. I don't have 30 minutes. I'm on live right now. <laughs> this is a general so manager. We're live. I, we uh, need 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 Brandon, you we we for, we, we got to move on. Yeah, yeah, no 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 we, no we no because you can't say that this conversation. Fine. No, we're not revisiting. I'm, uh, you got it. I'm no forfeit. no we're not. not. No no no. You, you no because you can't make those statements. You, you can't say that. I'm. It's my opinion. Say I can say whatever I want. I'm not paying somebody who I can't use on okay. the court just because they're a good locker room guy. You, okay. I, and then I, guess what, Ashley? Guess what's going to happen? Your team isn't going to be successful. I'm not saying I don't need a vet. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you're talking about paying them X amount of money when they're not giving you productivity. I'm not saying I right, don't need one. Hold on a second. One. I got it. I got it. So, hey, buddy, don't say your name, okay? Don't say your name. I got a question for you. All right? Okay. All right. We're, we're having this. Oh, dang. And now I got the another. <laughs> all right. I'm going to call you back. I'm going to call you back. All right. All right. Got his name. <laughs> all right. Oh no! Don't say his name. Oh, I'm not going to say his name. For the cause. This is going to end this debate right now. And if I'm wrong, oh my goodness! If Ashley wins again, another. Hey, hey! Don't say your name. I got a question for you, Ashley and I. Um, we appreciate you rocking with the platform and always supporting us. So I have a quick question for you. Okay, we're having this debate. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you word it correctly because I already know you're going to manipulate how I I'm say not it. you can you can <laughs> listen so here here's what happened here's the yeah, question first, first of all is Ashley your co-host on paper route yes okay you you she's doing good you like her you like she everybody loves the her being on the platform no, no, I don't really like her but go ahead I'm gonna <laughs> 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 you silly that's okay <laughs> all right so you listen sweat off my back this is a guy um he runs things in, in on an NFL team right now. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, he don't like me. I don't like him. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all right, real quick. As, as long as we got that established, then we can. Likewise, boo. <laughs> all right, really quick, really quick. Let's get to business because I got to let you go do whatever y'all NFL executives do. Um, do y'all even work? As you were with your question. <laughs> okay. All right. So, P.J. Tucker came out and basically said that um, – there's an argument that he could be, he's worth more money than what he is because of his leadership. Is that right, Corey? Yeah, Am I yeah, saying yeah. This right? Yeah, he feels he's a social worker and an NBA role player. He, he feels said he's, he's underpaid because of his he, strong he leadership. He feels that he's a he feels that he's a social worker and an and NBA a, player. And he feels that he's player. underpaid because of his leadership. Strong leadership. Yep. Because of his strong leadership, right? So the question is like guys like that or the 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 UDs of the world, the Haslams of the world right do you keep them around would you pay them above market value um because of what they bring to the table right so my thing is it's like when you have a guy, guys like that they actually they actually uh they actually get the team to be more productive and maybe even healthier right and ashley's like i'm what i don't want to put any words in your mouth ashley what's your point i don't have a point i got nothing to say to whoever's on the phone we can keep it we can keep it pushing <laughs> Okay, we're doing okay. Yeah, she's in good. her feelings right now. We're good. I, so, don't, I don't, I don't talk to I people who don't. It's fine. I know she's taking it personal. No, I'm not taking it personal. Been, I just got nothing to say. Ashley, I was so Ashley oh. basically came out and said you don't pay those guys because you have That's a salary cap. That's not what I said. Cap. Well, then what? What I said it? was we're talking about two different vets. We're talking about a vet 
we used we used Udonis Haslam and PJ Tucker as an example. I said PJ Tucker, you I can agree is underpaid because he still can go ahead and contribute on the court. He can contribute in a game. When we're talking about a Udonis Haslam, I'm saying paying him over market value when you're not getting productivity from him on the court sounds good, but in an industry where the salary caps, it's unrealistic. That's my only thing. I'm not discrediting what a vet so, means to the locker room. Right. So so basically that you know, how would you approach the this, you know, you've been around for a very long time. When you have guys that have strong leadership like this, like, how do you approach the business side of things? No, I see, I see it the exact same way Ashley does. I don't think you pay a premium uh, for leadership because if that's the case, then there's director player engagement and roles like that that pay significantly less for the same thing. But we, when you, you just said premium, who said premium, though? You said over market value. If he's saying that he deserves more money, Right, because you know, like she said, he's contributing on the court, so you have to pay for whatever that role is, and then you have to add, you know, a little sugar on the top because you, right, the leadership. So you got PJ you know, Tucker, who's you, making five million dollars. Here's, here's the thing, too, right? Like, you PJ is doing his job. A part of your job on the team is a part of not only balling on the court but being a leader. If that's who you are, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not paying a, I'm not paying a baller for less if he's not a leader. Okay, so PJ Tucker's making five. He, say that everybody else want to pay him five. Do you give him seven? It depends on it depends on my organization and, and my relationship with PJ. If okay. I feel because some of it too is, and you've seen it when you go play for a coach. Like look at all these new coaches that are coming in, and they then they go bring somebody from their previous stop because that that player can help them implement their way of doing things. Their culture, right? right? And, yeah, and so sometimes in the in the interim. You might pay a little bit extra for it, but you're not going to pay extra for it over the course of a five-year deal. No, for sure. No, that's not that's not the debate. The debate is: do, Does a guy like that actually uh, give more product, create more productivity throughout your team because they're able to get through to the younger guys and eliminate distractions, and then also implement culture or be an extension of management or coaching in the locker room. Well, I'll say it like this. The two examples you gave, I would say from the example you gave with P.J. Tucker from five to seven, I don't think that hurts you. Because, again, he's contributing where it matters the most on the court, right? But if we're talking about U.D. and, and love and respect to U.D., um, I'm not paying U.D. $5 million to get no minutes just to be a good leader. I can hire U.D. on the coaching staff or in the front office to do the same thing. Okay. All right, so it sounds like you're you're leaning towards Ashley Nicole Moss. Yeah, and Ashley, okay. I was joking. I'm I was joking, joking too. I was just no, like, she wasn't. Time no, she out. Wasn't. I was no, joking with the. Oh my god, I was totally uh, kidding. I also, listen, whether you liked me or not, it wasn't gonna hurt my fans, but I was joking. If I was, if I was All right, we got our media, answer. I send you like a, a, a virtual hug or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not on social media at all. That's interesting. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Are you are you wow. allowed to talk about other teams? If it's if it's me and you, don't get this man in right. trouble. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know the rules. TV. I don't Jesus. know the rules. Exactly. All right, brother, I appreciate you always being here and, and helping us out here because it was definitely a heated debate, and I appreciate you saving uh, Ashley because she was saving me. I was he right. Rain, 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 rain. Brady just mad because he got cooked again. Uh, oh man. Listen, and I still gotta, I gotta do one of your platforms. I mean, we coming I've in. Holding, I, I've been holding off everybody. Right. Uh, everybody's hit me up to to do it, and I said I wasn't gonna do it until I, I told you I was gonna do it. Until I did your show. Am I allowed to say? Am I allowed to say your name, or should we keep this quiet? Can I tell him what no, you do? You can, you can. You can tell her. Okay. Okay. No, we're 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 no. Quick we're, question. We're, we're doing the show right now. Fu- do you think so the Cowboys I, win yeah. the Super Bowl this year before we let you go? Oh, no, you got me. You got me in trouble. Okay, do, we do, ain't saying your name. Do though. the cow? Do you think the Cowboys win the Super Bowl this year? No, he can't do that. He can't buy. Bye. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. <laughs> That's too funny. All right. All hold, right on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, we got to move on. We got to move on. All I, right. just, I just want Brandon Marshall to look into his ISO real quick. I'm not apologizing to you because I disagree. I think it's it's different styles. Yeah. The man phoned a friend. Yo. All right, we'll hey, call another friend, one. The friend no, 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 literally no, 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 no. sided with me. Mean, no. We 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 mean, no. And he still won't forfeit. Why? Why we got to move on. Because we, 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 we got to move on to Factor Foolish. Tell me why. We have to do Factor Foolish. Why do we have to do that? We got some new partners that we want to keep happy. All right. <laughs> I just, I just want the ISO. All right, well, what you want me to say? Just, just, uh, <laughs> just say that I was right. You weren't, Ashley. You weren't right. You weren't right. It's different. It, just like he said, he said, yeah, PJ Tucker 
I'll give him a, a couple extra, but not UD. For me, I'm giving UD extra because to me, he sets the tempo in that locker room, that organization. Now, I wasn't thinking, I didn't think, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think ran, okay? Um, I didn't think, I didn't think, okay, that anybody would be on your side, okay? I didn't think that, all right? So I will give you that, that, you know, I thought you were dead ass wrong. You were just wrong. Not just did, but I wasn't wrong. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys, real quick you before feel we good? go to fact, look, like she's smiling, just and he right. got under your skin too. I wasn't under; he was under yeah, my skin. I don't how would, he, sense, you, sense, how would he know me? I mean, how would he get under my skin if I don't know him? Doesn't make any sense. You could only true one thing about me: you can only get under my skin if I actually know you. Mm -hmm. Like if I don't know you, I couldn't point him out of a lineup. You so didn't want to even skin? answer the question until he agreed with you. I was being funny. He said he didn't like me. I said I didn't like him, and I said I don't have anything to say. But you still got to give your take. I was, oh, just I, being, I was just right, being no, funny. I Real quick, guys, before funny. we get started with Factor Foolish, Suns Nuggets tonight. Who wins? Suns. I'm five. Nuggets. Sorry. We're yeah. at home. Denver, that altitude. I'm just kidding. No, I think the Nuggets. Role players tend to play better at home. Right. I think um, you'll have a better productivity from the bench tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going with the Nuggets. Nuggets. Who what you was got? the question? Suns Nuggets. Who you got? Game five Suns, tonight. Suns Nuggets. They're in Denver. Um, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with the team that has the most depth, that Shawnee have the most depth. And that's the Suns. The, the sun. <laughs> Got a split decision here. <laughs> the Suns. All right. All right. No, this is going to be a good game, man. Like, um, this is this is exciting. I thought the you know the Warriors Lakers uh, series has been phenomenal. I think this so far has been the best series. Um, we'll see what really? happens. Yeah. Well, who, yes. Who do you like? What series do you like more? I mean, I feel like Lakers Warriors has been a great series. No, for sure. No, for sure. Of... But the best one throughout the. Is this the only one tied up, I think, right? Jimmy Butler was special against the Bucks. I mean, that mm -hmm. was good, but well, I'm talking about like the, 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 you know, I love the well, story. Well, Boston's tied. Yeah, Sixers Celsius is a good one though. Yeah, that's a good one. Also, yeah. they're tied. Yeah, up. but it like the like Steph versus LeBron. I get like, it. The storyline. Yeah. I guess just where uh, the series MVP is though. MVP versus MVP. Okay. Harden. I'm not mad at that. All right. Yeah. All right. Moving on, guys. We're gonna start with Factor Foolish now. So if you guys remember. I'm going to read these guys a statement. They got to determine whether it's fact or foolish and give their explanation why. So, start it off. A rookie quarterback leads their team to the playoffs next season. Fact or foolish? Fact. Who we got? Carolina Panthers, Bryce Ooh. Young. Mm. I think they get in wild card status. I don't have them going deep, mm -hmm. but I do have them being there. Wow, mm -hmm. that's interesting. They could be a surprise team. We're seeing younger guys come in and contribute faster. Back in the day when I first got in the league, uh, guys had to sit two, three years. Hell, Aaron Rodgers sat four years, right? You're seeing Jordan Love still in that same organization. He sat for a few years. Um, but now guys are coming in and contributing right away. And so for me, Ashley, I, I like that uh, that pick, but I'm going to go to the Colts. I think they're built mm. from an infrastructure standpoint uh, better. And Anthony Richardson, I think they're going to put him in position to succeed uh, and still tap into what he does great and not overwhelm him. I like the Colts. I think the Colts, uh, from a management standpoint, where Chris Ballard, the general manager, to you know their defensive side, their running game, they're healthier up front. Like this team, Anthony Richardson could potentially find his find himself having a moment this year because this team mm -hmm. is ready. Yeah, yeah. Now that's gonna be interesting to see. All right, next one, guys. Eagles will have the best running game in the NFC. Fact or foolish? And the NFC or the NFC East? Just in the, in the NFC in general, actually. Mm. Let me go to let me go to this. Let me see. Let me look at all the teams. I'm gonna before. say they were nice last year. Mm. They were efficient last yeah, year. The entire were. NFC? We're not even talking about the NFC East? Because, yeah. yeah. look, they just acquired DeAndre Swift from the Lions, who I think is a dog, who's going to have the best year of his career, in my opinion. And they also got Rashad Penny. He's like a big, I say, a power back. So they'd have an a interesting dynamic, at least between those two, and they still got Scott. You got to look at, look at philosophy. What about the Chicago Bears? Um I'm trying to think. What, yeah. what, what about Alvin about Kamara? Can he right bounce now? back? And I don't know who they added to. Uh, well, you still got, what's his name? Mark Ingram down there, but they're a little older. 
Oh, the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. San Francisco thinking. 49ers. Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I'm going to go 49ers. Probably yeah. going to have the better. Yeah, I'm not going to. I mean, outside of and Christian McCaffrey. And I think McCaff- also. What back think- do they have outside of Christian McCaffrey? It doesn't matter because their offense is never. It, it wasn't. It's not built on who they have. That that was actually, uh, you know, that was um, anomaly for. Did I use that right? Mm-hmm. That was an anomaly for the San Francisco uh, 49ers to go out there. Yeah. Or not even San Francisco 49ers, but the Shanahan's. Remember, their right, offense right. is about our offense, and we can put any receiver there. Yeah. Go back to Coach Mike Shanahan back in the day. Terrell Davis, Hall of Famer, he was a seventh-round pick, yeah. right? Um, not only that, but I think that they're going to also rely heavily on their run game because you have Trey Lance back back from injury yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo's gone um Brock Purdy's coming off of an injury also I don't even know if he's going to be ready for the start of the season mm-hmm. and I think that because Trey Lance hasn't gotten those reps in game time you're yeah. going to want to go ahead and, su- and and kind of cushion him in with a heavy run offense you're not going to want but him do you, throwing that do you want to Brandon do you want to run and Ashley do you want to run Christian McCaffrey into the ground though I mean aren't they, aren't they going to use him to his strengths but, can't, but yeah. Debo can also give well, you some runs well, well they're they're he, they're, cause he, he's a he's a he's like a he's, he's a, a tweener no, yeah, McCaffrey, McCaffrey. Well, McCaffrey, never, he's going. He's going to have. He's, he, he might have. He could have twelve rushes. He could have twenty-five. Mm-hmm. But he's definitely going to have like let's say, average maybe twelve carries a game. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably got to use ten, him in the past game. ten, ten, yeah, ten attempts. I'm, I'm, I'm targets, targets, targets. Yeah. There we go. Ten targets. You know, mm-hmm. as a receiver, mm-hmm. as a slot guy, out of the backfield. He's a special guy. I yeah. also think that the Eagles are in a situation where they don't have to rely solely on their run game. They can also pass. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, Jalen Hurts will run the ball himself. I think that the 49ers are going to cushion Trey Lance for a big chunk of the season until he gets comfortable because he hasn't really been able to get familiar with this team yet. So I think that they're going to kind of mask that um, development or lack thereof with mm-hmm. a heavy run game. Yeah, yeah. All right, moving on, guys. Yesterday, Chiefs GM Brett Veach told ESPN that the sky's the limit for wide Call receivers. Call Brett. Maybe Brett Kadarius agree with Tony. me more. <laughs> Call Brett. Anybody got Brett's number? Speak. I'm saying over. Uh, uh, <laughs> Look, she feels so good. But, uh, no, I don't. You I feel think, so good. I think it's crazy. You, this is the epitome of like when being petty goes wrong. <laughs> Try to call someone <laughs> to prove your wrong. point right. on the show. It's not over. Because you were like, oh, I got her now. Mm-hmm. I got her. And you called person. someone and still got disagreed it wasn't, with. It wasn't, he didn't totally disagree. He leaned more towards you, meaning that he doesn't put as much stock in it because he said, what, I can put him in other positions through the organization. But, Brandon, you know, I was forfeit. disappointed. Forfeit. I was dis- I was Wave the white mm-hmm. here. What's this guy's name? What's this question? Wave the white hey, flag, I'm Brandon. Not, no, hell no, I'm not. It's, it's, Wave it. Every Listen, Elon Musk leads different than uh, 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 Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos leads totally different than Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones leads different, uh, differently than Robert Kraft, right? To each his own. Yeah. I thought this guy, knowing ball, would put more stock into <laughs> leaders in a locker room. Ball. All right, so but, maybe they're not going to have a great year this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go, go, so, go. So, yeah, no, two years ago, Kansas City Chiefs, they parted ways from Tyreek Hill, their number one receiver. Mm. Last year, arguably, Juju Smith was their number one receiver. They parted ways from him. Again, GM Brett Veach, speaking highly of Kadarius Tony, they acquired him in midseason last year, and he had uh, you know, a stretch where he was dealing with injuries and whatnot, but had a Super Bowl, I mean, had a touchdown in Super Bowl yep. 57, right? So my question to you, again, GM speaking highly of him, Pat Mahomes speaking highly of him, does Kadarius Tony lead the Chiefs in receiving yards next season? Fact or foolish? I'm he was in Florida, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then went to the Giants, mm-hmm. right? Traded mm-hmm. over. I actually, I'm going to say uh, foolish here. Oh. Yeah, let me tell you why. Because the leadership in that locker room is so strong. And they showed that it was highlighted when Tyreek was, was, was traded away. Or was he traded or was he traded or was he a free agent? I think he was traded. Traded. Mm. Forgetting ball. Um and it showed that Patrick Mahomes and the Travis Kelseys of the world was able to get other guys to rally. Do I think he's going to have a better year? Absolutely. But, man, that, that's tough to say that uh, he's going to go out there um, and, and, and lead the team in receiving yards. You still have Tra- Travis You still have Travis Kelsey there, yeah, too. Yeah, you know. And then also, you know, he is more of like a – I would call him an athlete, right? You know, punt returner, kick returner. Mm. They'll put him in the backfield. You know, you'll see him on jet sweeps. He's a he's a player that you. It's like a McCaffrey almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Mahomes does have the possi- the 
the potential to make any of his receivers look good. But I do agree with you. Travis Kelsey seems to be his favorite target still. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know how that will affect the amount of passes that are thrown um, Tony's way. Um, will he look better than he did on the Giants? Probably. Um, but is he going to lead the team in receiving yards? I don't know. I tend to lean towards the duo of peanut butter and jelly, Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes to do that. So we'll see. That's right. We shall see. We shall see. All right, guys. Right now, James Harden's line tonight at 21 and a half. You think he goes over and under? So factor fool. James hope, Harden scores hope, more I than hope, 21 points. I hope he. I hope he mm. goes over. I hope he has a huge night. 30. Points. I think he'll go over 21, but I think he'll go under 30. Really? Mm -hmm. You were right yesterday. I took uh, Steph Curry on the under, and mm -hmm. you took the over. And you were I took right Jimmy there. on the under. You took Jimmy on the under, under and he 30. had the under? He had like 28, 28. I think. 28? Yeah. Yeah, you were hot. See? You you know how much money you would have made if you got into we can't, But betting? we can't bet in Florida. Yeah, you can. How? It doesn't you let no you. No bookies. Oh. I'll be your bookie. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go... Angle? I'm going to say over, and I'm going to go way over. I wow. think there's something called like a – I forget what they call it where you can add more, but I'm going to actually – I add, say he goes – Add points, yeah. Yeah, add points. Yeah. I say he goes over 30. Whoa. Yeah. Interesting. 30. 30. Yo, we'll see. But, but, but I would say this. Right now, Ashley's on a heater. Disclaimer. Ashley's on a heater. Her bets and also your takes. Your takes. You've been on a heater. You've been on a heater. So if you're going to listen to anybody, listen to Ashley. And that pains me to say that. It's painful. <laughs> mm -mm. All right, last one, y'all. Last painful. one for a little bit of culture talk. Jermaine Dupri beats Diddy in his versus battle set for September 8th at MSG. Factor Ooh. Fools. <laughs> Damn, okay. I got to roughly go through their catalog in my head. Go, yeah. You go first, Brad. I'm uh, I think it's going to come down per to performances. Um, Jermaine Dupri, I would say, um, is... I would say uh, Diddy has the edge because Diddy's more of a performer. Because if you really start peeling back the 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 layers in their catalog which you're which what you're trying to do now ashley it's easy to put diddy out there oh diddy oh my goodness diddy's the best diddy's the best jermaine dupree touches everyone jermaine dupree touches bow wow mariah carey uh you know so many in hip-hop right like so many in different genres this dude's different diddy as well but Man, he's going to have to have like a show. Like I heard Diddy, there was a clip of Diddy talking about stuff is going to be flying around and we're going to be wearing this and wearing <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. right? So Jermaine Dupree, if he wants a chance, he got to really come with the performance side of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it, and, and, I don't know if it, I don't know necessarily if it, you mean performance like individual yeah, performance? Yeah, like, like, like you're going to have somebody flying through some the sort air. Of like, yeah, you yeah. Ever, have you gone to <laughs> Vegas? No, you haven't. We talked about it this weekend. Mm -hmm. You have to go see Usher. Uh, his residency in in Vegas, mm. like he has, they're, you're skating. He has a strip club that comes out. Right, you got people flying. Yeah, he's in the stands. That's what I mean by the performance. I mean, digital okay. boards. I'm, I'm thinking hit wise. Like, okay, for example, Honey, Mariah Carey, one of her biggest hits, one of my favorite songs. That was Diddy. Okay. That was Stevie J. That was Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. um, but then you do also, like you said, have a lot of Bow Wow's hits. You have a lot of Mariah Carey's later stuff. But then Diddy, you got I Need a Girl. You have Mace. You have the Notorious B.I.G. Mace ain't coming out. They um, beefing, ain't they? But I'm saying just in terms of the hits that you have. You have yeah. Jagged Edge. You have Faith Evans. I mean, you... I, uh, <laughs> I'm, mm. and, and, and then Jermaine Dupri, Aaliyah. Escape, Bobby Brown, Crisscross, Jay Z, right? And then and they both, he has Mace, Cheat on You, but Danielle and Jones, then Diddy TLC. Also, Diddy also has his own hits. Monica, Last Fabulous. Night, I couldn't even get an answer. That was a, that was a mm. jam back in the day. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Are you going? I'm leaning towards Puff Daddy. I don't know. I'm leaning, Daddy. Daddy. I'm leaning Daddy. towards Diddy. <laughs> I'm leaning towards Diddy. Yeah. So, who you leaning with, Mark, Corey? Who you got? Mark it on your calendar. Honestly, I'm thinking I'm leaning towards Diddy, too. Yeah. You yeah. got Jermaine Dupree? You got JD? But JD do got some yeah, hits. It's I'm like a, JD a, got the hits you forget about. You're like, oh, wait, he was I, a part I, of that? He was a part of that? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Diddy got 112. Yeah, that's that's Mace. right. I like what Corey JD. just we said. We got Faith. Let's not even go into the new era where we had Danny Kane and Day 26. Those were hits, too. Like, mm -hmm. 
Oh, you don't think he's still relevant? Y'all better go watch the Jermaine Dupri episode. He talks about this. Like, yeah. y'all just don't know. Like, y'all got to listen. That's what it the is. vision. He got the vision. I don't know what that is. The R and B singer. Like, you playing. Does he's he... breaking. He, Lo, Lele Pons. He can even go to the youth. What's name? Uh, kid. What's another? But, but we're not talking. Yeah. No one's ever. I don't think anyone's ever discrediting his relevancy. But we're talking about those hits that are like yeah, mega stadium be... hits. Like Lily, what's her name? Lele Pons. I don't know if I'm just I saying, can't name like... one song that she's done. <laughs> really? I personally can't. Can you? Yeah, I got her. On, I got her on my playlist. No, but can you do it like right now off the top of your head? Yeah. Russia. Sing it. Nope. Why? Lele. Le, <laughs> no, you. If you girl, gotta look it up. Le, it's not a. It's not a hit. Lele. Here you go. Super size. I can sing with it too. Then we can end the show. You never heard this song? I don't even know who this is. Lele Pons? Corey, do you, do, she keeps saying it. Do you know who that is? <laughs> Watch, you gonna hear this song, you be like, well, you might not know it. See, I know it because I got kids. You gotta have some is kids. She a, is she a teen? Yeah, she's, she started when she was like five, six years old. Oh. Can huh? I just have huh? What kind of. Hey, we appreciate you guys rocking Paper Route. We're about to land a plane here. It's a long interview. Channel man. 103. It's not. It's oh, not an interview. It's just the, the yeah, opening of the song. It? Faction we talk. Opening. Fast forward that. The end of the music. I can't. <laughs> here you go. Here you go. Watch this. You ready? Oh my friends. Yeah. What her name? What's her name? Shout, yeah. Shout out Layla. It's we 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 come outside. Do you want your fries? I say super size. Super size. Oh, super man. size. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lay Lay Pons. Shout out to Lay Lay Pons. Shout out to Ashley Nicole Ma. Shout out to Corey in the cut. This was a phenomenal show. Um, <laughs> Ashley one, Brandon three, Corey one, uh, uh, Brandon three. <laughs> What? Why are, you Why are you doing this? Oh, man. Because your argument was a song about French fries. Like, what do we? Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just. Yeah, I wasn't saying. She, I'm not resonate. saying he's going. You. Bye. We see y'all tomorrow. We love y'all. We love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, talking about super. Hey, talking about super size. <laughs> <laughs> this is how JD went. <laughs> that was your argument. <laughs>